It's the biggest race in motorsports. It's been memorable. It's always unpredictable. Are you kidding me, boy? It's historic. And there's a fight between Kale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. If you win this race, you win this race. You win this race, it stays with you forever. That, I can promise you, it's the great American race. The moment has just about arrived. Opening day and NASCAR's most important race all at the same time. The 56th running of the Daytona 500. We're glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox. Chris Myers and gang here and to call his 14th consecutive Daytona 500 for Fox. Let's join McLemore award winner for motorsports journalism here for his 40th Daytona Speed Weeks, Mike Joy. Mike, congrats. Thank you, Chris. And it seems like just yesterday, for, for the first time in those 40 years, I truly believe that 43 drivers awoke in Daytona Beach this morning with a single thought. I can win the Daytona 500. And it's no idle boast. As close as these cars are, the way the aerodynamics have worked all week long, if you can stay with the lead draft and if Lady Luck will ride along, you can win. The great American race. Darrell Waltrip won it in 1989. Larry McReynolds won it as crew chief with Davy Allison and with Dale Earnhardt. The emotions of a capable driver as we approach this start. Yeah, listen, Mike, we all know the magnitude of this race. I mean, we started racing here in 1959. This is this is the birthplace of speed. People, drivers have come from all over the world to run this race. That's how big a deal it is. But as a driver, when I bolt myself down in that car right now, I got so many, emo my, my emotions are running all over the place. I know the start's gonna be chaotic, and I know I gotta be prepared for that. But the one thing, it's, it's my golden rule, and I pound it, pound it, pound it. I gotta not beat myself. I, I, that's when I roll off pit road and I get I start down through there. I, the first thing I say, Lord, don't let me beat myself today. The competition I can handle, but don't let me do it to myself. All right. So much of this race is in the hands of the drivers around you, Larry, and that just increases the unpredictability. Yeah, and Mike, there is no set winning plan or winning formula to win this 500 mile race. You have to develop your plan and your strategy as this race unfolds. But the biggest thing, whether it's the driver, or the crew chief, you have to be smart enough to adjust that plan throughout the race. Biggest example we may see today of a game plan that gets changed. The winner from this race a year ago, Jimmy Johnson, starting at the rear of the field in a backup car. So they may have to adjust that plan a lot as this race unfolds. 49 drivers attempted to make the race. Let's have a look at the starting lineup, 43 cars deep for this Daytona 500. Austin Dillon in his second 500, fourth driver to win the pole for the race in the number three. And Martin Truex Jr. on the outside of the front row again, but he'll be in a backup car. Matt Kenseth and Denny Hamlin in those Joe Gibbs Toyotas won the two Budweiser dual qualifying races. Jeff Gordon, three-time 500 winner, and Casey Kane, who's finished twice in seventh place. Marcus Ambrose ties his best Daytona 500 start, and Kurt Busch second three times in this race. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 2004 winner, and Paul Menard, top 10 in two of the last three. Josh Wise driving the Phil Parsons car that finished top 10 last year, and Brian Scott, a rookie. Eric Almarola in Richard Petty's famed 43 is in his fourth 500. Trevor Bain, the 2011 winner. A.J. Allmendinger with a new team ties his best start, and Kyle Larson, the talented, touted rookie for Chip Ganassi. David Gilliland, the pole winner in 2007, and Landon Castle raced his way in for his second start. Ryan Newman, the 2008 winner, and fourth place finisher in the 500 twice, Clint Boyer. Tony Stewart, 19 Daytona wins, still looking for the 500 and the Harley Earl Trophy, and Jamie McMurray, who won in 2010. Cole Witt is a rookie alongside Terry Labonte making his 32nd, and he says final Daytona 500 start. Greg Biffle, who finished third here twice, and Terry's younger brother, Bobby Labonte, also a cup champion, 22nd consecutive race for Bobby. Danica Patrick, last year's pole sitter, and the runner-up in 06, Casey Mears. Alex Bowman is a 500 rookie, and Carl Edwards, second in 2011. A return for Brian Vickers, his eighth Daytona 500 start, and two-time defending champ of the 500, Jimmy Johnson. Brad Keselowski, who finished fourth here last year with Sunoco Rookie of the Year, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 
Joey Logano, who finished ninth in 2012, and Michael Annette up from the Nationwide Series, a rookie. Kyle Busch, the deepest he started in the field in 10 years, and 2007 Daytona 500 winner, Kevin Harvick. Reed Sorensen back in a full-time ride, making his fifth 500 start. Justin Allgaier, his first. Rookie Parker Kligerman shares row 21 with two-time 500 winner Michael Waltrip and David Reagan, who's won the July race at Daytona and also at Talladega, anchors the field in 43rd. What do you say we talk to the hottest guy in Daytona? Hey, Denny Hamlin, it's a DW in the Fox Sports booth. You got a copy there, brother? Yes, sir. I got you loud and clear. Hey, man, you can do something today that nobody else has done. You can clean sweep the weekend down here, the week down here. Are you uh, are you ready to go, bud? Are you ready to go racing? Yeah, I tell you, I mean, it seems like it's been forever since Homestead, but uh, our team's just been on a heck of a roll down here, and our cars have been great in the draft, and obviously today handling's going to be a big factor. And the field's twice as big as anything we've raced so far, so you got to be prepared for anything coming your way, and I think we are today. Yeah, your car has been amazing, buddy. And uh, what, Denny, what, what do you think? You just run out front, try to lead this thing all day? Is that your plan? Honestly, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to stay up front uh, as far forward as I can. The past few 500, I've gotten shuffled and, and found my way at the back and just laid there and waited for the wreck. And usually when you're trying to make your way up through the field, you end up in the wreck anyway. So I'm going to at least have a little fun with it. All right, my friend, is it Denny time? Absolutely, all we do is win. 10-4, have a good one. Let's get some late-breaking stories from Pitt Road, beginning with Steve Burns. Mike, when Austin Dillon played Little League Baseball, he wore jersey number three. When he was 10, he posed for pictures in Victory Lane with his grandfather, driver Dale Earnhardt. When he was 13, he told his grandfather he wanted to race. Well, Richard Childers handed him a weed eater and said, and said, go to work. Well, here he is just 10 years later, leading the field to the green flag on the pole position. They were a little conservative the other night, but if the car's right, they're gonna let him race today. It'll be exciting, Matt Yoakum. Steve, you heard Denny Hamlin touch on the fact that he's chasing Daytona history, trying to sweep. One of the biggest challenges, though, his crew chief, Darian Grubb, told me keeping that 11 car up front with track position. He's going to play a lot of strategy throughout the day. Two tire and fuel only stops until the final quarter. And when the guys go over the wall, only one position will change. These veterans ready to showcase their talent today. Chris Devota. Every driver in a backup car had to sacrifice his or her starting position. But it's especially painful when you were on the front row. So why is New Jersey's Martin Truex Jr. smiling? Because after putting just a handful of laps on his backup car in yesterday's practice, he said, without a shadow of a doubt, this car that he is driving today is better than the one that qualified on the front row. In his 10th Daytona 500 start, number 78 is most certainly a player. Mike? He will drop to the rear along with the other drivers who went to backup cars or change engines prior to Thursday's race. The engine changes, Danica Patrick, Tony Stewart, and Bobby Labonte, the rest of these drivers, all crashed their primary car and had to go to a backup. No rain for at least the next hour, the weather app Dark Sky tells us, but later in the day, who knows? 80 degrees. Track 10, the asphalt to 93. They're in some sunshine here, but also a lot of clouds as they get ready to go. 200 laps to make 500 miles. 55 down pit road, and they'll need fuel in just about every 40 laps. Here are your 40 Caboose track facts. Ford first won the 500. Tiny Lund for the Wood Brothers, number 21, 1963. And a Ford has gone to victory lane in three of the last 500s. Race fans, the waiting is over. The long winter, December, January, Jeff Gordon, Ari, February. Here we go with the Daytona 500. Oh, baby, anticipation, anticipation. Green flag is in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, guys.
come to full speed in the 3,000 foot backstretch. Pole sitter Austin Dillon in the number three had choice of lane. He chose the outside. That brought Matt Kenseth to him as they form up double file and hit the banking in three. Three wide, Marcus Ambrose in the middle, back at 10th place. You see Matt Kenseth in that 20 car, though, on the inside. He's been one of the drivers that's been able to pull a line on the bottom of the racetrack all weekend long. And a three car leads the first lap in the Daytona 500. How exciting. Coming up the middle, Brian Vickers, 55, along with Kyle Busch in the 18. And at the point, Denny Hamlin puts his Toyota in front of Dylan's Chevrolet. Here comes the 24 of Jeff Gordon on the outside with Kurt Busch in tow. Yeah, I believe when that 11 car, Larry, gets in front, what we've seen down here might be bad news for these other guys. That car has been so, so fast, and particularly when it's out front. You talked about him being undefeated in Speed Weeks. Remember, he won the last race of the year in 2013 at Homestead Miami Speedway. Casey Kane, the five, now the man in the middle. Two distinct rows and the 20. That yellow and black Toyota of Kenseth up in front of Kane now as he and Trevor Bain try to make something happen through the center lane. Jeff Gordon picks up Kenseth. Moving in front of him to become the lead car in that inside draft. And Kyle Larson's in the wall for the second time. Yeah, he got in it down here in turns one and two, Mike, and I, I didn't think there was any damage to the car. Maybe a little cosmetic, but he's in it again. This is one lap ago, Darrell. Watch the 42. Yeah, he just kind of kissed it right there, and I thought he's okay, but might be having a tire going down. And this is what just happened up in turn three, and Larson has made it to pit road. Heavy right, damage right, right side front. Up. Get... Surprisingly, in these first three laps, the field has split into three distinct packs. Yeah, and, uh, Mike, that group back there with Tony Stewart, Danica Patrick, and some of them, they have just kind of like formed up their own little group back here anticipating I think maybe this start was going to be a little more chaotic than it was. I tell you one driver we better keep an eye on is Kyle Busch in that 18 car. Kyle Busch started back in the 33rd position and he's already cracked the top 10 in eighth in just six laps, four laps. Larry, the draft is so huge. This car this year is pushing a little bigger hole in the air. And when you're way back like that, you get the advantage of the draft off to all the cars. And of course, we know how Kyle is. He can kick his way through traffic about as good as anybody I've ever seen. And he's done it again today. Rookie Kyle Larson lost a lap with that pit stop and repair. 26 cars in the lead pack, then a long gap. About four seconds to Joey Logano, but four cars are about to uh, about to reach him. So here's the lead 25 off turn four and back to the start finish line to complete the fifth lap. And our pole sitter, Austin Dillon, he's drifted back to about 15th spot. He's just not getting any help on that inside line. We've seen all week long for the inside line to work, it takes an organized group of drivers to be able to pull up toward the front. Right now, Mike, it, it, it's kind of like taking off in an airplane. You know, the strike off of this race, you take off, you got to keep your seat belt on, your tray table's all put up. But after we get squared away here a little bit, these guys will get their legs under them, they'll start making some moves. Just don't ring that call button. <laughs> no, don't get out of your seat. Teddy Hamlin on point where he has spent most of the week for Joe Gibbs Racing. He won the Sprint Unlimited race for last year's fastest qualifiers. He did that on Saturday night, Thursday night. He won his qualifying duel. His team, the Kurt Busch, Paul Menard, then Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Brian Scott are all in Chevrolets behind that lead Toyota. See, Mike, one of the things that's different about today, so you say preparation, preparation, we've run these cars to death down here, but it's 80 degree, degrees today. The sun's out just a little bit. The track is a lot different than what it has been any time we've been down here. All right, let's get some updates first on what happened to Kyle Larson, Krista. 
Yeah, Mike, it's a torn right front. There you see the, the victim, the tire. It's pretty torn up for Kyle Larson, the rookie, just hanging on to his car when he came in. Now he's gathering feedback from his crew chief, Chris Heroy, his spotter, Derek Nealon, saying, we'll be okay. We'll get a caution. We'll get you fixed up. But that was the problem, a torn, blown right front. So Larson is the only car not on the lead lap, and should a caution flag wave, the first car in that position would gain a lap back. When you start the race, start with really low air pressure, in the right side tires particularly, and that tire flexes. That thing could have gotten over into the sway bar arm, and that's why it cut it down so soon. Our pole sitter Austin Dillon led the first lap, but Steve, he's faded to 16th. What's up? Listening to his spotter, Andy Houston, Mike, he's telling Austin, just experiment, drive some different lines, get some different places on the track, long way to go. Now we mentioned the lead pack and it's 21 cars strong and then there's a gap. It was four seconds, now it's down to a second. Uh, Joey Logano backed up to that group that's now led by Martin Truex Jr. in the 78. Ricky Stenhouse with him in the 17, then Logano, Greg Biffle in the 16, and a bunch of rookies, and that white number two of Brad Keselowski that several drivers think is going to be a real factor before this one's over. Mike, these guys don't forget. Remember down here last year, early, 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 first few laps of the race, there was a big wreck. Took out some strong contenders. Kevin Harvick, one of them. That's why you see these guys doing what they're doing right now. They want to get that start under their belt, get the car settled down, everybody kind of find their where they want to be and then they'll go racing here in a little while but right now they just want to get the start out of the way and then they'll start concentrating on moving forward 10 green flag laps complete in the daytona 500 on fox let's take you side by side You saw Denny Hamlin's number 11 Toyota surrender the lead, and that puts Kurt Busch, the new driver for Stuart Haas Racing, in a brand new team, number 41, on point. Dropping back to sixth was Hamlin. Planned move, Matt Yoakum. Mike, his water temperature just kept on climbing, 240, 250, 260. He gave up the point, tried to find a hole farther back in the pack to change the air pressure on the nose so the debris would fall off. But then he said it's not going down. The concern, although the spider says he can't see it, is that it might still be there. Yeah, there's an opening right below where you see the word Camry. That's where air flows in to cool the radiator. And when he was running out front, he had all positive pressure on the nose of that car. So now he's drifted behind Marcus Ambrose in that nine to try to get that negative pressure to suck that debris off that grill open. And, and Mike, this is the way it, this is the way the Daytona 500 goes. Here is a odds-on favorite, and you see the grill, you see the stuff on the grill right there. Here's one of the odds-on favorite to win this race today. And the piece just flew off there. I think I saw. It. Uh, but you can't pre you can't prepare for something like that to happen. But you have to be able to react to it. Remember what I said: adjust your game. You got to be able to make an adjustment. 14 laps this time by, and Kurt Busch, the self-described outlaw of the Sprint Cup Series, is out in front. His younger brother Kyle Busch has picked up 25 spots since the start of this race. Kurt's talent won him a Sprint Cup championship. His temper cost him a couple of high-profile rides in this series. He spent last year with single-car Furniture Row Racing, rebuilding his resume and vaulting that team into a contender. This year, Gene Haas, Tony Stewart's partner in what was a three-car race team, said, I'd like to see my company's name in victory lane and he hired Kurt Busch and formed a whole new fourth team around him. The, the thing about Kurt is he had to learn how to handle disappointments. 
When things didn't go well, he blew up. And he had to learn how to control that and handle that. And I think, I think, I think he's got it under control now. He has to make this work. This is his fourth race team in four years. Sixteenth lap of 200 in Daytona Beach. Kurt Busch, Paul Menard, Dale Earnhardt Jr. out front. Still under green in Daytona as we introduce Budweiser Speed Tweets, a new interactive game where fans compete for a chance to race go-karts with Kevin Harvick. Visit Budweiser.com slash Speed Tweets to register and for official rules. Kurt Busch still out in front here. He's led nine laps after Denny Hamlin led nine. And Austin Dillon, the rookie, led the, not a Daytona 500 rookie, but rookie contender, led the first lap. Greg Biffle was running 21st. Ironically, the same spot Kyle Larson was running in when he cut a tire and hit the wall. Look at what happened to Biffle a couple of laps ago in the 16. Darrell, it's almost like Brad Keselowski in that two car was right there at that left rear quarter panel. It kind of pushes him up the racetrack a little bit. Yeah, I'd say there's a little arrow of push involved there. But here's the thing, Larry. This racetrack, I can't tell you folks at home how different this racetrack is today on what these guys have seen down here for the last week. I mean, most of our practice has been at night. It's been overcast. It's been cool. The track has a lot of grip. Right now, not much grip out there. Greg Biffle lost a lap making a pit stop for repairs. Steve? Yeah, Mike, we just saw the damage to the right side. What crew chief Matt Pusha was concerned about was whether or not that sheet metal on the right side was crimping the tire. So they did bring him to pit road. They've cleared the tires and changed four tires while they were in. Biffle's been one of the fastest forwards here all week. Well, the good thing is he has found one of his teammates, Carl Edwards, in that 99 car. And even though he's a lap down, he's the first driver one lap down could get that free pass. And he's running speeds comparable to the lead pack. Four Chevys out front led by Kurt Busch. The first Toyota is Denny Hamlin fifth. The first Ford Marcus Ambrose in sixth. Hamlin diagnosed the overheating problem as trash on the grill gave up the lead to get it fixed. Finger got it, Bill, thank you. Yeah, it's off, we're good. Dropping quick. Dropping quick, he meant the temperature, water temperature. Yeah, you ha he has to watch two things with his gauges because it's a pressurized system. And where you really get in trouble, if you get too much water pressure, then that pop-off valve kicks off. So it's watching water temperature and water pressure. I tell you how critical it is, water pressure and temperature. Most of these guys have moved those two gauges to the top of their dashboard where it's in the driver's line of sight so he doesn't have to look down at all. Caution flag waves in Daytona. Kyle Larson, who made a pit stop earlier after cutting a tire against the wall, and now he goes to the inside. Looks like a little more right front fender damage. Yeah, you know what, Larry? i, I, I got to believe it might be that sway bar rubbing on that tire. That would be my first thought. Oh. Not the way that little 21-year-old wanted to start this 2014 season. Great news, though, for Greg Biffle. We just had spoke about him. He's the first driver one lap down. Darrell, in that spin, these cars run inner liners inside the Goodyear racing tires, so the tire didn't go all the way down to the rim, but it looked like the right front was flat all the way around. Well, the right rear is flat, Mike. Uh, yeah, ah. I, can, I can see the right rear there. That's why the car spun violently the way it did. You can see coming to pit road, he, uh, he lost a right rear tire this time. Pit road is closed. There will be no opportunity for the leaders to stop this time around. If you stop when pit road's closed, you restart in the back. Now, Denny Hamlin told Daryl under the pace laps about how many drivers we have out there, and we now have 42 drivers on the lead lap. Pit Road will be absolute melee right now with different strategies and probably every driver coming to Pit Road. Today's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything they learn making tires for the grueling demands of NASCAR inspires what rolls into yours. Goodyear, official tire of NASCAR. And you know, you're not seeing double. Uh, one of those Goodyear blimps is making its final voyage here today. The Spirit of America, tail number N3A, will go into the Guinness Book of World Records for longest continuous use of one airship.
when it retires following today's Daytona 500. Here's another reason I really feel like pit road is going to be very chaotic because with only running 22 laps, I think as we saw in the earlier races here at Speed Weeks, we're going to see most of these drivers do fuel only. When those drivers at the front of the pack, when they're full of fuel, they're going to be leaving their pits, and some of the drivers at the back of the pack, they're not even going to be to their pits but, yet. But, Larry, this is my favorite pit stop. I, I, I finally get to come to pit road. I get them. If my car is not real good, I can get some adjustments made. I can debrief a little bit here. I can take a deep breath. We've got 23 laps under our belt. This is a great little break here. Regroup. Let's go again. And watch these athletes at skilled positions going over this wall. Many of them are former NCAA and professional athletes in other sports because timing and agility is at a premium here to get that car on and off pit road as quickly as possible. Pit road is open. Krista. And we know how important pit stops are, as you documented, just trying to make sure they don't slide into their stall. Paul Menard, a fast car, he wants rear grip. The call for Paul on tires, two. Matt? Danny Hamlin hit pit road in the fifth position. He has an opening behind his box. Then he said the car was too tight. The Matt can't it, then the 20 car spins around, almost hits his teammate, Danny Hamlin. Chassis adjustment, he's away for the 11. No chassis adjustments on the 41, right side tires, Matt. Also, right side tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He says his car is a little bit tight and bottoming out just a little bit. Now, Denny, uh, rather, Matt Kenseth did a very smart thing here. You must complete your service within your pit box. There's no rule saying which way you have to be facing. <laughs> <laughs> We're under caution, 25 laps into the 500. Getting ready for the restart, Kurt Busch, Paul Menard, a pair of Chevys on the front row, double file restarts all the way through this race. Behind them, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, and Clint Boyer. Green flag, a couple of calamities on pit road during that caution. We'll catch those up in a bit. Denny Hamlin, that 11, was pushing Kurt Busch in the 41, and Jeff Gordon coming to take the green, and that 24 was pushing Denny Hamlin. Riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Right now in fifth, second on the inside behind Paul Menard. 41's out there a little bit too far. At, uh, see how it works out for him. You get that four out, you have, the other guys get a huge run on you. Sometimes they can go right by you. Kyle Busch of the 18. Snuggled up against Dale Jr. And Marcus Ambrose up on the outside after being involved in a pit road skirmish. He's in the nine. Coming on the middle lane with Jeff Gordon. Boy, they hung Kurt Busch in the 41 right out there to drive. Yeah, he had too big a lead there. I know that doesn't sound right. <laughs> right can't. How can he have too big a lead? But down here with the draft, they just set him up and ate him up. Jeff Gordon pulling alongside. Those are teammates. Gordon in the 24, Earnhardt in the 88. You see our post sitter, Austin Dillon, in that three. He's worked his himself back to the top ten, sitting there in the seventh position right now. Three, maybe four wide for a moment there as they hit the back straightaway and fan out. Way down the bottom, Martin Truex Jr. all by himself. He earned the outside pole for the Daytona 500, but lost it when his car was trashed on the last lap of his Thursday night qualifying race. Yeah, you, you know, you throw a couple of right side tires on these things, put a little more wedge in them, adjust them up a little bit. You get a little more racy. Every time we go into pits, we're going to get a little more racy. Truex has help on the bottom in that 78. A couple of cars going with him now. Trying to march to the front. Ricky Stenhouse, Ryan Newman back there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was in the lower groove there in that 88 car, trying to pull Kyle Busch in that 18. Then he got stuck in the middle, but now he's getting a little bit of help, for, I think, from his teammate Casey Kane in that five. Kyle Busch drops the 18 to the bottom. No help. Well, this, I don't like the looks of this. Three wide. Yikes. Hang on, boys. Keep your, keep your line. Hold your line. Ambrose up top in the nine. Dylan, the three right behind him. We've got three wide all the way back through there. The track's plenty wide enough, but this is happening at almost 200 miles per hour. Yeah, it's, it's just so treacherous. The cars move. I know that maybe the fans at home can't see them move around the way they do, but the driver has his hands full when he's uh, in the middle of a three-wide situation like that. Now watch the 18 of Kyle Busch on the bottom, the yellow car. 
He almost had enough coming through the tri -oval to clear Dale Jr. and move up in front of that middle lane. Now, two by two again. That's the other frustrating thing, Larry, is you're sitting there like, a, like Casey Kane was, and, and you can't get back in line anywhere, and you need help. Forsey, he's going to get some here. He's got somebody coming up behind him here to give him a shove. Got to keep him from losing too many spots. Hamlin having a look at Paul Menard's lead. Menard, veteran short tracker from Wisconsin, who has won the Brickyard 400 in Indianapolis. Trying to score here at Daytona in that bright yellow number 27. And Darrell, before Denny Hamlin passed Paul Menard in that 27, he kept going up to the side of him and moving away, getting that side draft and that cushion of air there that pushes him away. Yeah, you know, every year we come down here, there's some catchphrase, you know, like it was a two-car tandem and bump drafting and last year the new car. This year, the... the, the oh, uh, trouble whoa, for Martin what Truex, Darrell. That's not good. Smoking. Oh, boy. Tough break for the Jersey driver. He will coast around to pit road. And at the strike, Hamlin uses the high side and that wide radius to retake the lead, at least for a moment. And on the in-car radio, Martin Truex said, it just blew up. Well, that's, that's his backup car. And of course, they had to get something out the bottom or something, you feel like. We saw yeah, it. It's big. It blew up. I looked had no pressure right away. So. NASCAR has observers around the racetrack atop those Sunoco diamonds on the outside of each corner, and they relayed fluid on the racetrack. So as Truex coasts into the garage, caution waves for the second time. Now let's go back to the first caution flag and the run on the pit road that Larry predicted. Some cars would be going out as others were coming in. Watch the yellow car of Matt Kenseth, the red and white one of Trevor Bain. Was there contact there because Kenseth Goes right around and then forward into his pit stall. Boy, he was sure way out on pit road to be that close of his to his pit box. Well, it's a good thing he was because, look, I mean, he just basically spins you right into the box. We'll explain that in a moment. But first, watch the 9 of Marcus Ambrose and the 10 of Danica Patrick. Patrick coming in on our Fox Super Zoom. Ambrose going out. Yeah, the problem, Marcus Ambrose in that nine was running six, did fuel only. Danica Patrick was one in 31st. This is what I was talking about. Ambrose is leaving, and Danica Patrick, you're riding with her here. She's not even made it to her pit box yet. And, and Larry, remember something. This is the first time since we've been down here that all cars are on pit road at one time. We've had the field divided with the unlimited races and the, uh, the sprint race, but this is the first time all cars have been on pit road. The first, that's the first time right there. Greg Biffle got the free pass on the first caution, and on this one, it'll be Kyle Larson. Here is Matt Kenseth, who told his crew he could not find his pit sign. So it went, once he did, he hit the brakes hard. That locked the rear brake and spun. It was his mistake. That's what it looked like to me, like he just had too much rear brake in the thing, and when he got on him real hard, the thing just spun around. I'm not sure that Trevor Bain in the 21 no. had anything to do with it. But that makes a lot more sense that he was still that far out toward the edge of pit road, that close to his pit box. I think since it's only been five laps since the restart, I think we'll see strategy all over the place again with possibly drivers staying out, some coming in taking tires, some doing fuel only. And, and oh, by the way, I, that pit stall that the 20 car has, Matt Kenseth, that's my favorite pit stall. It's right there at the opening. It used to lead to Victory Circle. Uh, but that pit stall, thank goodness for him, uh, there was an opening. He was able to spin right into the box. Marcus Ambrose is the first of the takers on pit road. He might have had a little damage in that bump with Patrick. Krista? Yeah, right now they hadn't really been talking about damage. It was just a little bit of a tap, but it was enough to send Danica, as you've documented. But Marcus Ambrose is coming back in. They took fuel only on the first stop. Matt? And Matt Kenseth is still saying the car a tick on the tight side for the 20. Since the fact they're in the back, they're going to go four tires on the 20 machine, Steve. And Matt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulls away. His crew chief, Steve Latart, said, do the opposite of the field. Come in, fuel only for the 88. 33 laps complete of 200, and now Kyle Busch leads. Welcome back to the Daytona 500 under caution with 34 laps complete. Let's take a closer look at today's race action with Sprint. Kurt Busch has led the most laps, 
five drivers have now led at least one lap. Kurtz led 15. Switch now to the new Sprint Framley plan where up to 10 friends and family can get unlimited talk test and a gig of data for as low as $25 per month each on the Sprint Network. Martin Truex dropped uh, a good bit of fluid on the racetrack when that engine let go. So finishing up cleanup here in Daytona, there's your leader, Kyle Busch. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Welcome back to Daytona. A couple of drops on the lens, a few sprinkles, but that has stopped and we're close to getting back to green flag racing. 36 of 200 laps complete. The next big thing, who will it be? We have seven Rookie of the Year contenders in this Daytona 500 and seven first-time drivers in the 500. Now, Austin Dillon ran this race last year. He was our pole sitter and leader. There's Alex Bowman in the 23. In 17th place, Cole Witt got into the wall but repaired his car, raced his way in. He's 20th right now. All guy, Annette Kligerman and Larson has bounced off the wall. Pit repairs have been made, and he is back in the race. And let's go to the garage. Chris Devota. Martin Truex had two great cars at Daytona. Does disappointing even define what you're experiencing right now? Not really. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's definitely a tough break uh, for the team. The car was super fast today, and uh, I was, you know, I went to bed last night thinking. It's probably my best shot ever to win the Daytona 500, and I uh, really, really felt that way. Even today, the car was just so good, and uh, just, you know, riding around, kind of biding our time, um, you know, trying to be patient. You know, you got to get to the end of this thing, and unfortunately, you know, it wasn't meant to be. It looks like something knocked the oil, pe oil pump belt off. I don't know if it was debris off the racetrack or what, but, you know, you typically that belt comes off. You have about two seconds to shut it off before it blows up and just didn't get enough warning. So, uh Definitely a shame, uh, definitely a tough break for this team. They built a great race car, but uh, I guess the only good news is we've got a car in one piece to race next time because it's pretty darn good. Thanks, Martin. Tough break for Truex. He's the first car out of the 500. Kyle Busch is your race leader in Daytona. A packed front stretch grandstand, an infield filled with cars and campers. Here are your Toyota top performers in this running of the Daytona 500. Kyle Busch, your leader, under caution. Denny Hamlin, Brian Vickers, all in the top five, and Alex Bowman and Cole Witt in the top 20. A light rain shower came, and now it's gone. We'll be back with more from Daytona after this. Welcome back to Daytona, where at 38 laps, the race has been red flagged temporarily uh, due to a rain shower that was not unexpected this afternoon. In our meeting with NASCAR this morning, they said, well, we expect we may have to get this race in in fits and starts a little bit at a time. But as long as they have a reasonable expectation of completing the entire 200 laps, they'll send the jet dryers, the air titans out to dry the track, and we will make every attempt to do so. 200 laps is the race distance. We must get past halfway, 100 laps, for the race to be called official today if heavy rains come and are going to blanket the area for the rest of the day and evening. But right now, brief shower. All of the track drying equipment is out there and working already. And those air titans have shortened the drying time 30 to 50 percent from the previous use of jet dryers alone. So. Drivers have climbed from their cars, and we're going to catch up with some and speak with them during this brief delay. Let's have a look back at what was the championship defending season of Brad Keselowski in 2013. One win, 16 top tens for Brad. With Brad Keselowski, have you started tweeting yet, by the way? Soon. Soon, I should. <laughs> I want to talk to you first, Steve, Thank so I after, after I talk to you. Thanks, buddy. Hey, what have we learned in 38 laps? Uh, I think you've seen uh, some handling come into play. I saw a couple of cars just, you know, lose the nose, uh, lose the back end, and saw one or two get in the wall. So uh, that, that's been interesting. This rain shower here is going to be real quick. So appreciate all the fans to stick with us. It'll be uh, just a moment. But, uh, Steve, our car is really, really fast. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of giddy like a little kid at an amusement park. I think this car can go up the front and take the lead. And, 
run away with it, so I'm excited. So you're ready to get back to racing? Very ready. Let's go. All right. Well, you got to tweet for a while first. All right. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> All right. See you. Brad Kozlowski, one of those NASCAR champs who's looking for his first Daytona 500. We're all looking at the uh, radar. This is live and up to the moment. See where we are and the heavy rain and those flashes. There's lightning to the north. One of the reasons we have been uh, red flagged at the moment. With Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, we started this at 1.30 and at 2.13, officially the red flag comes out after a couple of cautions. Part of the early role in this, Jeff, was the track, and it was mentioned how they raced at night. We had warm temperatures, a, a, a slick track, obviously grip affected. Now, with the overcast, cooler temperatures, some rain once they dry this, and it looks like it won't be a long time, there'll certainly be adjustments for crew chiefs, drivers, and their cars. No, this is going to be one of those kind of like opportunities for them to debrief a little bit, figure out what way the track may go after this rain when it cools down when we started the race it was around 95 degrees and i think a lot of crew chiefs were anticipating a hot track now that we've got this rain it's going to cool back down so you got to have a very tunable car we've had five leaders of five lead changes kurt bush leading the most laps younger brother kyle currently the leader you heard from brad keselowski about what he's seen so far a little early but one thing that caught my attention the rookies how they handle it kyle larson having trouble with the wall yeah and again that's not unusual to see some of these young guys go out there and make a mistake as far as early part of the race now, i know he was getting a lot of guys moving around. They said a right front tire went down. But this is the kind of problems you can run into. You saw how quickly our pole setter, Austin Dillon, even though he led that first lap, the veterans kind of shuffled him out of the way and said, youngster, get to the back of the pack and go to school. A lot of different strategies. I don't want to talk to Kevin Harvick, who had to go to a start at the back of the pack, and he's won this thing before, you know, at the last moment. He said, I like it back there early. I want to let the rookie, everybody settle down, see who's doing what, who has what. And obviously later in the race, that's when I'll make my move. I mean, that, that slingshot side drafting, he almost did that when we were watching uh, the duel. So that's, that's one approach. Uh, what are some of the others that you think we'll see play out? I think it's pretty simple. With the 18, or at least Joe Gibbs cars, I think they want to get up front and stay up front. They feel like that's the place they're the most comfortable and you mentioned you know Kevin Harvick yes that's the experience of a veteran coming through a guy that's won a Daytona 500 he's showing a lot of patience and a lot of confidence too in his race car that he can get up there Kyle Busch searching for his first Daytona 500 win he's won everything else and is working on trying to get a championship as well there's your leader under a red flag a bit of a rain delay at the moment here at the 56th running of the Daytona 500 we're live on Fox Welcome you back live. You saw Captain America give the command. How about Air Titan? We're glad they're here. Those machines push the water off the track onto the apron where a vacuum truck collects the remainder of moisture. We've had intermittent showers and there is a severe weather warning for this area until 245 local time. So no, uh, no evacuation order given, but track officials, NASCAR officials have alerted people to be prepared to uh, seek shelter. We talked a little bit about Kyle Busch. We hope to go racing here shortly. Obviously, that'll help drive the track drying time if the track was completely wet. They say about 90 minutes, yeah. which is uh, which is terrific, uh, but certainly not that wet at, uh, at this point. Uh, Austin Dillon on the pole leads an early lap. You addressed a little bit about the, the pressure with the number three, and I always wondered if Dale Earnhardt Jr. having the legacy of his father pushed on him if now the three car coming back if that if that lightens the load a little bit I think it does Chris because you know a long, long time ago everybody kept saying we need to get Dale Earnhardt Jr. into a Richard Childers car or at least get the three number down to wherever he's racing and whatever team he's racing with and I think he was all the time feeling like they're trying to push me into my daddy's number into my daddy's car that's not what he's ever wanted and I think now that Austin Dillon has agreed that this is going to be my number I can handle the pressure he is going to you know feel like the pressure is at least least off of him about getting behind the wheel of a number three car. And Richard Childress, the owner and the owner of that three number, has said, you know, Austin Dillon has earned the right uh, for this number and this race. So we go behind the scenes with him during speed weeks at all access pass to the driver of the three. stories evolving around Austin Dillon, obviously the three number coming back. He won Rookie of the Year honors in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series and the Nationwide Series. He can now do it in the Spring Cup Series. No driver has won all three before. All right, guys, we're here at the uh, media day, hanging out, doing a little uh, television and some photography. So hopefully everything goes well. Go. Fox Sports 1, you're calling for NASCAR. Perfect. 
Perfect. Okay. We're done here with Daytona Media Day. Everything's finished here. I'm hungry. Thanks for hanging out with me. have too much scheduled before qualifying, so I slept till about 12.30, then walked out to the garage, talked to Gil for a minute. All of the RCR cars were quick in practice yesterday, and here is his grandson, Austin Dillon. Car number three is officially on a qualifying run for the Daytona 500. 21st after lap number one. Can he do it? Here comes Austin Dillon to the checkered flag. Yes, Austin Dillon has grabbed the top spot. Austin Dillon in car number three on the pole for the Great American Race. Starting the year off with a pole right here, it brings some momentum into our season already to show that RCR cars have speed. I think we're right way to the box. So I, can be I, mean, no I mean, you were so much smoother, lower than yesterday. Yes, I was over. The headlines certainly are going to be dominated by Austin Dillon, Richard Childress Racing, and that number three car. How do you plan on staying grounded between now and the green flag? Dirt racing. I'll be at the dirt track. I'm actually going to be late right now. I'm trying to talk no, RC really. into getting me a helicopter ride over there if I can, but... <laughs> Please. <laughs> There's enough traction in three and four. We get it snugged up right here, it'd be real good. It's pulling for momentum, I think, more than anything. Austin Dillon continues to go to work. Will he pull the slide chop? No, he'll hold it down on the inside barrier. You've got a new leader. Austin Dillon to the lead. Off the turn four. Double checkered bikes in hand. Austin Dillon. Austin Dillon currently 10th as we are under a red flag after rain a little bit earlier and you talked about earning his way in. You can see at age 23, Camping World Truck Series, Nationwide Series. I, I like that he's got, it's like a Richard Petty style hat. He's got Dale Earnhardt's <laughs> car number. So who does he drive like? What's his style? How would you describe it? Or how would his crew chief describe it? I think it's his own driving style. Again, when I was talking to Gil Martin about this young man, I said, Gil, tell me the truth. What do you think about him? He said, Jeff, honestly, he said, I worked with Clint Boyer when he came up from the Nationwide Series and started driving for Richard Childers, and I honestly believe that he's better at communicating and getting things figured out than even Clint Boyer, and we know how good Clint Boyer is, so I think this whole organization has got a lot of hope that he's going to turn out and be productive as a driver, and that's all that you can ask for. He may not ever be a Dale Earnhardt. Nobody's going to be, but he is going to be a good race car driver. Yeah, be his own guy. He certainly has a likable personality. I mean, he's it's focused. Fantastic. He loves to yeah, race. Everything and, about and, it's uh, just great. Yeah, very, very engaging, very mature uh, <laughs> young man. And meanwhile, checking the weather map. See, it's not looking bad north. Right, and that's where we want all those things. But you can see right where the circle is, that's where we have the rain. If it moves through, and it's supposed to, we should be okay as the, uh, the air tighten dryers using that compressed air as opposed to jet engines trying to dry the track. We're glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox at a rain delay at the Daytona 500. About to hear those engines fired up here in prime time and the Daytona 500. Thanks for hanging with us wherever, however, you've been watching through what is now history. You're part of the longest red flag rain delay, same day, same night, in Daytona 500 history. Six hours plus, and we can compare that to the longest NFL game since the early 90s, the longest nine-inning regulation baseball game. And if you're flying from coast to coast, Five hours right there, a long, long day. You, you know, the thing is right now, I'd rather be making history than being history. Well, the good news is we have uh, three great hours ahead of us of right. unpredictable, wild racing with the stars, the best at what they do behind the wheel, and the same for the guys upstairs. So let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Stuart Haas Racing tweeted that two animals from each species were seen departing the air Titan track drying equipment. <laughs> Very good sign. The weather delay brought to you by the movie Noah. All right. Brad Keselowski's Ford, Denny Hamlin's Toyota, Kurt Busch's Chevrolet. Of the three makes, those three drivers seem to have been the class of the field so far. Who, if anyone, has an edge? Well, here's the thing, Mike. It's going to change. 
It, it's all going to change starting now. Basically, we're going to run three races. We ran the 38 laps that we just finished up earlier today. Now we're going to race to 100 laps because that's halfway. Then we get to the 100 laps, the guys can say, okay, well, maybe this thing's going to go all the way. So strategies will change over the next short period of time. And who has the best car? This, this condition, the conditions we're going to race under, the weather change, I have no idea. There may be somebody back in there that wasn't very good that comes charging to the front. That's a great Bill Elliott type answer because the newly uh, named Hall of Fame nominee often said, we'll just have to wait and see. Larry, is, is there an edge? Well, I think Daryl's spot on, and I think we just saw one of the drivers that's laying in the weeds, Kevin Harvick. He has been good down here all weekend long. He was so happy with his car. He didn't even practice during that little bit of practice session we had on Friday. But I just think there's so many drivers in the back of the pack, especially Jimmy Johnson, Tony Stewart, Michael Waltrip. I just think they have not even remotely shown what they can truly do. But I think possibly when we go back racing here, we're going to see more of exactly the strength of these drivers. Yeah, I think it's like Michael said he'd been running with Jimmy Johnson for a while. He better try to run with him now because Jimmy Johnson's getting ready to go somewhere. All right, let's catch you up on the 38 laps that have run so far and where the 43 car field stands. Kyle Busch's Toyota out front, Casey Kane's Chevrolet, then Hamlin and Vickers in Toyota's, Paul Menard's Chevy, Brad Keselowski's the first Ford in the race, Jeff Gordon's been to victory lane in the 500, then Joey Logano. Last year's Rookie of the Year, Ricky Stenhouse, and pole sitter, Austin Dillon. They are the top 10 of 41 cars that are on the lead lap. A.J. Allmendinger there in 15th with a new team this year, one of only four drivers to ever lead 10 or more laps in both the Indian Daytona 500. Now, one thing that jumbled this up right here is when the caution came out at lap 31, that was actually for the engine failure of Mark Trex Jr. We had 17 drivers that stayed out. Everyone else pitted for either two tires, four tires of fuel. So that somewhat jumbled things up right there. And then the reins moved in. Now, there's a, look, there's a bunch of good guys still. Look, there's Danica, there's Tony, Clint, Jimmy Johnson, there's Martin, Ryan Newman. I mean, there's a whole crowd of cars that I think were just messing around messing around is over with. Yeah, Reagan and Gilliland there. Remember them? Yeah, Mc Mc Murray Reagan for the up. win. Now, the season resumes next week at Phoenix. Martin Truex is out of the race. His crew chief, Todd Parrott, texted from Nashville. He's already in Nashville where they test tomorrow. It never stops for these teams. No. Just waiting for the command to refire the engines and put cars back on track. You can hear the jet dryers in the background and hats off to all of the safety and track drying crews here at Daytona in both the jet dryers, the air titans, and getting ready to go. So clash of the titans has now made the left turn off the speedway. Excuse me, Todd Barrier, not Todd Parrott. Todd Barrett is still here. Yes. Uh, he is a crew chief, but that's Todd Barrier who is in Nashville. So as soon as the uh, track drying equipment is away, we will crank the engines. And also a hats off to the crew members who work only on race day, because most of them boarded charter flights in Charlotte or Concord, North Carolina at 5 a.m. this morning to make the trip here, get their pits and equipment ready to service these cars. Going to be a long day and evening for these athletes as well. Well, remember, we got to be in Phoenix next week. And so these guys, they, they've got their Daytona cars here. They got to get their short tracks, uh, short track cars ready to go to Phoenix. So we got to have some haulers, probably meeting some haulers. There's going to be a lot of transportation issues. We got to get this thing in tonight so these guys can get on down the road. We keep mentioning drivers' names. I didn't hear any of us mention this driver right here, Dale Earnhardt Jr., because he has been running up there the front, and he's actually was the first driver off pit road of the drivers that pitted under this caution, sitting back there in the 18th spot. If you're joining us this evening for Daytona 500 coverage, let's catch you up with what's happened so far with this radio remix. All right, buddy, have you some fun out there. This is what you worked so hard for. Day, man. Good luck today. Have a good race. Here we go. Let's show them all something. Clay Paul's the leader here. We just blew up, guys. It's starting to rain pretty decent up here, man. We're 
about four different rain cells and thousands of lightning strikes in the air and to ground. But now the thunder is provided by these 42 race cars. Yeah, that's the thunder I like to hear right there. Mike, I, I got to tell you real quick. This reminds me of 1979. I mean, when we started to race in 1979, the track was pretty wet. We didn't have jet dryers and all the things we got now. So basically we had tire tracks. And so we tried to stay in the dry tire tracks. And of course, I don't know how many people remember what happened here in 1979, but if you get off in this grass tonight, oh my, you're probably gonna spend the rest of the evening trying to get out. <laughs> Drivers at the ready as our Fox camera makes its way down the outside edge of pit road across the bow of Jimmy Johnson Chevrolet and back to safety behind the pit wall. Denny Hamlin, he won the Sprint Unlimited All-Star event last Saturday night. He won his qualifying race, his 150 miler here Thursday night. Oh, by the way, he won the annual NASCAR golf tournament. Denny Hamlin has not lost at anything. And this did week. you uh, notice that piece we show, uh, show when he was playing basketball? He sunk a nice little left-handed hook. Yes, he did. It's like he said, everything's going in right now. And so right. he, he, the, the guy, he's, he's that kind of guy. He's a momentum racer. When and it's going good, it goes really good. And his streak is even longer. He won the last race of last season at Homestead Miami Speedway in November. You know what I see when I watch him? I look at his interviews and I look, think back to last year. I saw pain in his eyes last year. Yes. He just was not comfortable. He was not Denny, but he's Denny Hamlin now. This is another problem that I think some of these drivers may be faced. Now, look over there at Kyle Busch, the number 18. Look at the rear window. There's just so much humidity and so much condensation. This is a big problem for these drivers because, I mean, they obviously look in the rearview mirror as much as they do out the windshield, Darrell. Yeah, well, I'm sure they assume, and I, I, I'm right there with them, that the heat, uh, once the heat inside the car comes up, be like a defroster, uh, it'll clear those windows out. I hope so, Darrell, because these cars run full Lexan down the right side windows. They do have the window net for the driver on the left side. You'll get some air circulation in that car. But on the super speedways where they like to keep things closed off, will you get enough? 140 degrees will be enough. Uh, <laughs> it, it gets, it, it get even, I don't care what the temperature is outside, it's 140 degrees in the race car all the time. I'm with you. All right, the track sweeping and drying equipment making a run down pit road where these cars have been parked for six hours and 22 minutes. 38 laps are complete. Each lap now counts as we're back under the yellow flag with the red flag being lifted. You know, we've looked at a number of in-car cameras and you see the uh, gauge cluster there on the dashboard of this particular car. But some of the drivers, uh, you see all the gauges right here. Some of the drivers, Jimmy Johnson particularly, I noticed have moved their water pressure and their water temperature gauge up on the dashboard. See right and see where his is, they're up on the dashboard so he can Visually, he doesn't have to look down. There they are right there. He doesn't have to look down. They're right in his line of sight. That it gets paper on the grill like we saw earlier with Denny Hamlin. Or if those temperatures start to fluctuate, he's going to know it right away before the crew chief has to call and say, how are your gauges? Now talk, let's talk about the lights that you see glaring through the side window. That Musco lighting system is aimed back at the drivers and out at the racetrack such that when they're out there at speed, the direction they are looking, those lights do not come into play. Our camera sees them on the right side of the car. For the drivers, that's not an issue. No, it didn't. Uh, I've raced, uh, raced at night with these lights, and uh, they, they, bo they don't bother you at all. Matter of fact, the racetrack is much clearer. It's, it's got a much clearer view at night. It's like turning the contrast up on your TV. The lights just brighten everything up and they bring the surface and the wall and the conditions are so much clearer to the driver. Forty laps complete this time by. That is 100 of 500 miles. So 400 remain to race tonight. Glad to have you with us on Fox for the 56th Daytona 500. 
Kyle Busch leading. His older brother Kurt has led the most laps tonight, 15. Denny Hamlin's been out front for 10. Kyle for eight, Paul Menard for five, and Austin Dillon, the pole sitter, led the first lap. Now, the track dryers continue to work pit road where the cars were parked and the teams had tarps down to try to keep things somewhat dry, and they're going to need a couple of minutes to get pit road dry enough that NASCAR is confident these cars can come in at pit road speed 55 miles an hour and on these slick tires stop safely in their pit box. So it's like a brand new race, which means it's a great time for tonight's Subway Fresh Take on Things. Matt Yoakum. Well, Mike, back with the Sprint Unlimited and the Budweiser duo. Matt Kenseth pitted a little farther down pit road, closer to turn four. Now, earlier today, he spun on pit road. He was a little concerned going in about having a stall that was midway down, worried about congestion, and that ended up coming to fruition. They are going to give him more countdown pit stalls uh, for the rest of this race, but the guy who actually may have the best time here on pit road for the drivers to see it illuminated is that of the five, and Casey Kane. All lit up, right blue. Mr. Savota. Down in the four pit of Kevin Harvick. That's right, Kevin Harvick now drives the number four car for Stuart Haas Racing. To recap, he has made two pit stops. On the very first one, they took a little tape off the grill because he'd been running hot. The only other issue he's been having so far in the race, a little bit loose. They took fuel only on their last stop, and Kevin said that could be a concern. He talked to crew chief Rodney Childers just a few moments ago and said, keep an eye on it. We might need to come in for tires. Steve Burns? Well, Chris, I saw Jeff Gordon as he walked to his number 24 race car. He was all business, trying to win his fourth Daytona 500. He told the team his only concern with that race car in when we were running this afternoon was that it was just a little bit tight through three and four. So it'll be interesting to see how his car acclimates and Jeff Gordon acclimates to this brand new racetrack. Thanks, Steve. That's our Subway fresh take on things as we get ready to resume. We're running again in the Daytona 500. We'll be racing again shortly. Under caution at Daytona after a six plus hour red flag. You're riding along with Dale Earnhardt Jr. under the yellow. And Kyle Busch having a little fun with the Chevy SS pace car for tonight's race wanting to get things going. He's not bump drafting, but he's very, very close. More than anything, he's just having fun. Track looks very good, but uh, pit road still being dried, and this is the grass, the tri-oval area, which right now holds a lot of standing water, as spotter T.J. Majors told Dale Earnhardt Jr. Somebody gets in this front stretch grass, man. I hope they got a snorkel. I know where he can get one. Tiger Tom Pistone, uh, back in the day, raced here with a uh, scuba gear in his car because he was afraid he might end up at Lake Lloyd and he couldn't swim. So uh, might want to come in and get that snorkel. During the early part of the rain delay, Austin Dillon asked if anybody wanted to go and make a slip and, uh, slip and slide out there. This is Lake Lloyd. This is on the infield at Daytona along the back straightaway. The water table is very high in this part of Florida, in all of Florida in fact. And when they dug the dirt to build the bankings in 1958 for this speedway, they ended up with a lake. It's a nice lake. Got a lot of good fish in it. Got a few good years in there too, I think. We asked you to show us how to get ready for race day, so let's take a KFC social media pit stop and get a look. How do you KFC? In honor of the three car coming back, one of our viewers let his son play with his die cast uh, Dale Earnhardt collectibles. And there's the picture that he sent as they're watching NASCAR on Fox. I've run into kids that have little bags full of those little die cast cars an entire starting lineup and they know all the drivers and all the cars and all the sponsors it's pretty cool 
You know, Mike, one of the things you asked Daryl is the concern, even though air tightened the jet dryers, they've done an unbelievable job of drying this racetrack about right up against the wall. One thing I've been noticing that Brett Bodine, the pace car driver, has been doing with the field is bringing them right up against the wall because the exhaust goes out the right side of these race cars. You get all that heat from these 43 cars that are out there. That'll, uh, that'll dry it up pretty quick. There's on the right of your screen, driving the Chevy SS, Brett Bodine, a winner, former racer in the Sprint Cup Series. Buster Otten is the NASCAR official who is his passenger. Uh, a week ago Saturday night, there was an electrical fire in the pace car, not anything to do with the Chevy SS. Apparently there was a crimped wire in an auxiliary battery pack in the trunk that was set there to help run the caution lights. That was the cause of the fire, nothing to do with that Chevy. The jet dryers, they keep drying pit road. That's the reason pit road is closed. I would anticipate once they feel good about pit road that NASCAR will open the pit road and we'll probably see several drivers, especially near the back of the pack on pit road, if nothing else, just to top off the Sunoco race fuel. Tony Stewart, and that's confirmed, Larry. Pits will be open next time by. I mean, with a complete reset, Larry, I, I don't know if it, if it were me, I'd want to come down pit road and get myself all squared away here. Fill the fuel, four tires, and get ready to go racing. Defending 500 champ Jimmy Johnson. They had this to say about pit road. Okay, for pit road, about a lane outside of the pit box is, is reasonable. But beyond that lane, it's going to be pretty slick, so just be prepared for that. Track drying equipment working uh, toward the pit boxes themselves. And there you see still a little bit shiny along the pit lane. Even with 157 laps to go, Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car, you could see him shutting the engine off, trying to save fuel. Any any point in this race? I two laps a, to go at the line, Daryl. It's just a good habit to get into. You know, if you, you don't want to just all of a sudden decide you want to do something like that, you want to cut it off, try it, make sure you, you know, make sure you got your timing down right. But it's not as simple as it looks. I know it looks like you just turn it off, turn it on, but it really isn't that simple. Danica Patrick, last year's poll setter. A lot of questions uh, to us on social media. Usually if there's rain the night before a race or the day before, after practice, NASCAR will have a competition caution to let teams come in and make adjustments and change tires. Will that happen tonight? The answer is no. No competition caution. We're going racing. Pit road is open. Here comes the pole sitter and more. Looks like about half the field of drivers hit pit road. A lot of them about midway back. Austin Dillon is in. Kurt Busch, Trevor Bain. Topping off with fuel, most of these cars. Tires for A.J. Allmendinger and for Kevin Harvick, among others. David Reagan gets tires. Even with that few of drivers on pit road, it was still, they were all over the place down there, drivers coming in, drivers trying to get out of their box. Yeah, but you know what, Larry, this is such a great time. You've had time with your crew chief here before we go back to green. Maybe this is a great time to come in and make a few minor adjustments. Tony four. Stewart, four tires. Service pretty much complete. These cars will pick up the tail end of the field. And Jamie McMurray, looking at a little damage on the right front fender of his car. Very important aerodynamically at 195 miles an hour. Now during this lengthy caution and red flag, Kyle Larson, who had hit the wall earlier and lost two laps, making his pit stop, received the free pass. Greg Biffle got the free pass on the first caution. That goes to the first driver not on the lead lap when a caution flag waves. And that will put everyone on track on the lead lap. The only car out of the race, Martin Truex, with engine failure. Mike, it looks like about the top 22 drivers stayed out, so about half the field. Well, NASCAR fans are a hardy lot, and uh, they've endured a soaking rain this afternoon. Many scurried for cover, especially when the grandstands were cleared with the threat of lightning and severe weather. Went to their cars, went to nearby restaurants, sought shelter. They're back. They've waited all winter for this. And, and Mike, people say, you know, why didn't they call the thing? Why did they stay around all Why did they do what? Look, 
the grandstand's full. That's why they didn't call the thing. The people were waiting for them to get the track dry so we go back racing. That's, that's NASCAR's commitment to these race fans. We'll get this race in when we're supposed to, if it's at all possible. Michael Waltrip topping off the tank. Exit from pit road as we're under caution. He'll catch up the tail end of the field, and we're anticipating going green next time by. Just not a whole lot of urgency right here at this at this time with Michael. He's in the back. Uh, I think he's got a game plan. Uh, he's going to get back out there. There's some uh, cars he can run with, so no urgency at this time. Kyle Larson's car is still under repair in the pit lane, and they'll need to get going to keep him with the field on this restart. Kyle Busch, Toyota, Casey Kane, Chevrolet, Denny Hamlin, Toyota are your top three. Casey Kane in that five, he's been fast, but he's somewhat been under the radar the entire week here, and he really wants to have a good run, a good finish. Didn't even get a top 30 finish last year in any of the four restrictor plate races. Well, everybody in the garage all week have been talking about the Gibbs Toyotas and that they were the teams to beat. Those were the cars to beat. And right now, they're living up to their reputation. Best sight in Daytona right now is there's not a blinking yellow light in sight. Not on the safety equipment, not atop the pace car. That means we're going green. The Daytona 500 resumes under green as they come to the line on a dry racetrack after a six-hour rain delay. Kyle Busch approaches the restart zone, and he and Casey Kane are on it. Green flag. Yeah, let's go racing. Three Gibbs Toyotas at the top four as Hamlin pulls alongside his teammate, Kyle Busch, in the yellow car. Let's just ride along, take it easy for a little while. What do you say, Larry? I don't think that's <laughs> going to be the. Point. I don't think so. <laughs> let's just get real. Three wide. Let's go. Let's get it done. Cole Witt, that 26 car, Marcus Ambro in the nine, making it three wide in the back in the middle of the pack. And on a green racetrack, scrubbed clean of, ass of rubber by the rain. They're finding out now at 195 miles an hour how these cars handle differently than they did this afternoon. That's exactly what I expected. The track is, I mean, you can run anywhere you want to right now. Your tires are good. The track is cold. It's got a lot of grip, and you feel very confident. Man, you're going to see some racing. I tell you, you're going to see them get it on right now. It's cooled off, and you said the engines will make more power. The cars will handle better. Will the drivers be braver? Well, I'm already seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Keselowski, the 2012 Series champion in that white number two Ford. Coroner Roger Penske celebrated a birthday this week. Keselowski would like to give him that Harley Earl trophy for the second time as a present. Man, one of the hardest things, and it makes me so nervous, is when they come through here three wide through this travel. Low banking, 18 degrees, running 200 mile an hour through here side by side. That's a handful. Casey Kane in that five, getting a little bit of help from Paul Menard in the 27. Seems like right now he's making that bottom groove work. Larry, nobody's going anywhere for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we have ourselves a wad. Yes, we do. <laughs> two Toyotas in the top lane, two Chevrolets on the bottom. Fighting for the lead in the Daytona 500, back under green. Completing 50 laps, 125 miles this time by. Casey Mears in that 13 car, he had quite a little line assembled at the top. Brian Vickers in the 55 shut the door on them as they were coming through turn four. The margin of error when you're running three wide like this is so small. If somebody moves over a little bit or wiggles a little bit, that's when you have a problem. And the degree of difficulty, it's as high as it's going to get right now. Looking at Keselowski in the middle. And that's where Kyle Busch is right now because Casey Kane down to the bottom with the 27 of Paul Menard is gunning for the lead. 
But here comes Keselowski into two right up behind Kyle Busch in the 18. They're going to try to make that mill work. There's Denny Hamlin, Kyle's teammate. That is three wide, six rows deep at 195 miles an hour. Folks, I hope you stayed up and uh, you're ready for some uh, exciting action here at Daytona because we have got it. We have 25 drivers running in less than a second of each other right there in that pack coming at you. We just couldn't do this earlier today. The track didn't have a grip in it. The track was slick. The cars were sliding around. The guys knew they had to be careful. Now they've got all the grip they need. They can do anything they want to with this race car. Some drivers have chosen to hang out at the back of the pack, and the tension that's evident up here near the front shows you why. Well, the spotters, are, you know, the drivers are busy, but the spotters are busier because they're trying to talk their guy through this mess, and uh, they, they've got to be on their games. They've got to be eyes and ears watching what's going on. And what I love about my driver buddies, they make this look so easy. Ah, nothing to it. We're three wide. We're 195, 100, 200 mile an hour. Yeah, nothing to it. Folks, these guys right now are about as tight as you're going to get all night long. Two by two. Two Toyotas on the outside. Two Chevys on the bottom. It's just like Noah's Ark, except Brad Keselowski in that white Ford number two right in the middle. Yeah, Noah would have gotten there a little quicker if he'd been in one of these arcs, I might say. <laughs> It's like it's the first time all week long we really were not seeing as Denny Hamlin oh. in the 11 goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the racetrack. What a move, elevator drop. Hamlin down to the bottom, sweeps up high, picks up Kyle Busch again. He was trying to break the draft of those other two lanes. He's trying to break out of the bubble, that big bubble of air. He's trying to bust out of there and he can get his teammate Kyle Busch to push him. He might be able to get out of there and get out in the front. But Darrell, you said it before we went back racing. This racetrack, it's given these drivers confidence. That's what allowed him to make that move right there. Oh, uh, they are happy with their cars right now. I'm sure that they're just talking about, you know, where am I, who am I running with and what, what, what's going on on the racetrack, not even talking about handling issues. How about that silver car? Number 32, Terry Labonte, two-time Sprint Cup champion has said after Thursday's qualifying race, this will be his final Daytona 500. He is tied with Richard Petty for second on the all-time list with 32 starts. Dave Marcus has been in 33 500s. Well, he just motored by one of his former teammates there, Jeff Gordon. Terry used to drive for uh, Henrik Motorsports, and uh, Terry's giving that old 32 car a freaky start. A pretty good ride tonight. Seventh place. But that's the unpredictability of the Daytona 500. We have said it. If your car will crank when they say, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines, you can be in position to win this race. Seems like a long time ago we said, as Kevin Harvick, who you're riding with, has just laid down the fastest lap of the race. At the top of the day, we said 43 drivers woke up this morning in Daytona Beach with the same thought. I can win the Daytona 500. Terry Labonte among them running in the top 10 at 54 laps as you ride with Kevin Harvick. I think our guys, you know, I think our guys are pretty good at prognosticating about who's going to be good because we know the 11 and 18 are good, the Gibbs cars. Michael kept talking about the Kislowski in the two car. He had run with him a little bit. Michael thought he had a really fast car. And here these guys are all running at the front, along with Brian Vickers in that 55 car. Yeah, I think all three of those drivers in the bottom line, they have had fast race cars all week long. You talked about Brad Kislowski in the two, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Joey Logano in the 22. Just this man right here, Denny Hamlin, with what he's done this week, has overshadowed all these other drivers. Oh, the 52 there is falling back. That's Bobby Labonte. He's got something going on, or else he's just trying to get out of there. Up front, Kyle Busch. Casey Kane in Toyotas, the Ford of Brad Keselowski. Brian Vickers, Jeff Gordon, Joey Logano. Keselowski. Whatever lane was not on point, the other 
lane. He was leading, and he's finally brought this bottom group right to the front of the pack again. Yeah, that number two car, that number eight car, that thing is going somewhere. He's got some speed. He's right there with the two others. And, uh, he's shown that all week. So, uh, Keselowski to hang, hang tough on that inside. Here comes Paul Menard down on the inside in the 27 car. He's got a run going. And he's got a line of drivers he's bringing with him. He's going to have to pull right up there to Jeff Gordon in that 24. That's how you know the cars are handling really good, Larry, when you can dive in on the bottom of three like that and hold your line. Because normally the cars want to wash up a little bit. That thing stuck right on that yellow line. What, what, what you don't want to do is get too comfortable doing this. you got to stay on guard. You can't let your guard down here because, uh, you know, even though cars feel good and it's going good and everybody's racing good, you can't let your guard down. you got to stay on the offense. The first 25 cars are covered by one second. That's the gap from first to 25th. Kyle Busch holds the lead. Good thing nobody said, let's just ride a while. We're under green in the Daytona 500 on Fox. Sixty laps complete, 150 of 500 miles in the books. After a lengthy red flag, which brought us to darkness, cool track, clean asphalt, and a new leader, Brad Keselowski, 2012 Sprint Cup champion for Roger Penske. Out in front, he won the title in a Dodge. Penske switches to Ford. Keselowski has the fastest one of those in Daytona right now. Yeah, in the pre-race show, Chris asked me, did I think the Fords would be competitive tonight? And I said, you know, they qualified really well. They've shown some speed, but we haven't seen it in the race. We're seeing it now. The two car is out there and leading this thing. He's going somewhere. Kevin Harvick up the inside for seventh place right now. New team for Harvick. He joins Stuart Haas Racing. Car number changes to Ford. Uh, this is the team that Ryan Newman had last year as 39. New driver, sponsor, and car number. Sort of, with a new crew chief. Rodney Children, great crew chief. Our pole sitter, Austin Dillon, led the first lap. And now he's settled back in the second pack. He's in 38th place after starting this race first. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Hey, you, you know what you got there, so just whatever you think here. Yeah, you're doing fine right there. Everything's good. Austin Dillon riding in 38. He's back there with Clint Boyer, Ryan Newman, and Michael Waltrip and Carl Edwards. The, the way these engines operate, Mike Larry knows this. If you just barely squeeze out of the throttle, you lose a lot of momentum. And you think, hey, I can't run with these guys. I can't keep up with them. All of a sudden, you get up there with the good cars that are running fast. You can hold it wide open and draft with them. All of a sudden, your car comes alive. How about Paul Menard in that 27 car? Brad Keselowski jumped to the top. And Paul Menard, with the help of Joy Logano in the 22, Kevin Harvick in the four, he's up there battling for the lead. This is a backup car because Paul was involved in that crash in practice on Wednesday. Watch out here, Larry. We're getting ready to come up on the lap car of uh, Kyle Larson and uh, see where they catch him at. He's going to shake things up a little bit here as they try to go by him. Larson hugs the bottom of the racetrack, and the pack begins to whistle past. Yeah, he's already had a rough afternoon. You know, Kyle Larson had been to wall a couple of times, came out of the pit late on that last restart and just never got up to the back of the field, and now they're lapping him. But this draft is so long and disturbs the air so much that even Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in 41st place at the tail end of this line, three seconds back, is still getting the benefit of the lead draft along with Carl Edwards, Michael Waltrip, Austin Dillon and Clint Boyer. Yeah, all the guys, we saw it in the other races here this week. At, you know, you get back, and if you get a couple of good cars together, they can actually chase this lead group down or any time the lead group breaks away. So you're not out of this thing, even though you're running back here in the back. Darrell, you get a championship point if you lead one or more laps. There's a little money, a bonus money for leading laps in the 500. But otherwise, if you're up in that front pack, you're building your playbook. What are you learning that's going to help you when push comes to shove at the end of it? Well, first of all, who you can trust? Who can I work with? Who's going to be my buddy? Look at look at Keselowski and, and Kyle Busch right there. 
are they right now they're saying hey man we're working pretty good together we're making good lap times how about let's uh, talk about what we're going to do at the end of the day so you start making deals you tell the spotter hey tell that 18 let's work together or whomever it may be so right now you're just strategizing a little bit getting things set up for the last little bit well i know one thing a lot of these drivers at the front will be setting up for here shortly will be green flag pit stops we do have the variable of the number of cautions we ran under that red flag but when i look at our top six or eight other than kevin harvick in the four probably six to eight laps away from what will be the first set of green flag pit stops you know larry it's just amazing to me how these guys that like uh, just look at brian vickers i mean vickers in a backup car he's running seven and uh, there's casey mears in the 13 car running ninth Trevor Bain in the 21 car running 11. Terry Labonte in the 32. He's running 12th right ahead of Dale Jr. There's some good, there's some cars running up front that we don't see every time we come down here. In the new movie Need for Speed, Aaron Paul plays a street racer who joins a cross country race with revenge on his mind. So with that in mind, we'll let the cars do the talking and give you an NASCAR on Fox, crank it up. Seventy laps complete. Oh yeah, we crank it off some laps <laughs> over 201 miles per hour right now. I think we're at max speed. Yes, I sir. I think we're starting. I think we're seeing max speed right now. Well, Joey Logano, the 22, is at max position first. Steve Burns. Yeah, he and his teammate. Brad Keselowski running nose to tail. The only report from Joey Logano thus far is his car is just a little snug going into turn one. Matt Yoakum. Steve Denny Hamlin currently in the seventh position. Now, when we went back to green, there was an intermittent problem with Denny's radio. It was scratchy, it was difficult to hear, and he could only hear them part of the time. He went to the backup radio. He could hear fine, but then it began to get faint. Now, it's a problem, and they're looking at ways of possibly changing out one of the wires on a stop. That's one of the things that happens when you put these cars under the car cover after when it's been raining. It, a lot of moisture. We saw it on the windows in the cars when they uncovered them. A lot of moisture inside the car. It can mess with the radios. It can mess with a lot of the wiring harnesses. I've seen that happen many times. Happens to my MGs when I park them outside. I don't even need a car cover. <laughs> Lucas Electrics. All right. Up front. Paul Menard battling Joey Logano. Logano on the outside with help from his forward coming. And Gordon. Jeff Gordon. He's coming. Coming to pit road. This will be a scheduled pit stop because Jeff Gordon, one of the drivers that stayed out on that last caution, they have to be a lot more cautious getting on the pit road because Steve, it's damp at the entrance. And Jeff Gordon's going to take four tires on this stop, guys. Remember, he said his car was just a little bit tight, but that was hours ago. It doesn't look like any chassis adjustments on the 24, just four tires and fuel. He does get a windshield tear off. I just don't think he was happy with his car. He kind of got caught in the middle there. He kind of fell back. I thought he felt like it was a good time to come on pit road without anybody else being there with nobody in his way. I think it's a good move. And Darrell, he had radioed. He was not happy with the driver, uh, the driving of the driver immediately behind him. That may be why he peeled off one lap before this group. Krista? 
And Mike, similar to Jeff Gordon, Paul Menard, one of those drivers who hadn't pitted since back on lap 24. He said he needs a little bit of an adjustment. He's just a little too tight. They're going to go back on the track bar. You see the gas man working there in the 27. Matt? And Casey Kate is in with the five. Right side tires going on. Oh, miscommunication. Casey thought it was going to be a two-tire stop. They're going to go for four. So that way, on their next stop, they can just do two as we get closer to halfway. These green flag pit stops, going from 200 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, it absolutely gets out of control. You see Kyle Busch in the 18, he's on pit road. Casey Kane has spun, trying to exit pit road, but it's still a bit damp. Now the field has gone by, so the track is safe to stay green as Kane grabs a gear and pulls away. It's got to be from the moisture down low there on the racetrack. He had to get into some of that. And I remember he had four brand new tires. They don't have a lot of grip when you first take off with them. Matt? And Kyle Busch's teammate, Denny Hamill, will pit next time by. Meanwhile, you can see the changers with the lights on their helmets for better vision to hit the lug sport tires for Busch. Oh, he grabbed the air gun. He has pulled the air gun down pit road. Now that will be a penalty that's considered removing equipment from the pit box. He'll have to come back to pit road under green. Green flag stops continue with Denny Hamlin's Toyota and Jamie McMurray's Chevrolet. You know, in the duels, we saw a lot of mistakes in, on pit stops, uh, and there's our first one tonight. Krista? Jamie McMurray right now, he had come back in for four tires on a previous stop. Jamie talking about how slick the track is, Matt. A slight chassis adjustment. Denny, Denny, uh, Denny Hamlin, also a bigger adjustment. Hopefully the team will, uh, hopes it works. They've handed him a wiring harness through the radio to see if he can have time to, uh, if they get a caution, to change out that wire so he can hear better. Now you have to be on the inside to come to pit road. No takers this time by. As we stay green at 75 laps. I'll show you what happened to Casey Kane here as he came in for his scheduled stop going out of the pits just right there at the apron at the exit of pit road. It's still damp. I, I just think it's four sticker tires, a little bit of moisture, and he gassed it up. And when he did, the thing went around. And now here's the 18 pulling that air gun out of his uh, pit box. NASCAR rule, if you remove equipment from the pit box, it is a pass-through penalty, which means as the field rockets past to 200 miles an hour, Kyle Busch is going to have to drive down pit road at 55. Here are the Penske Fords, Keslowski and Logano. They are teammates, but right this moment, they are competitors trying to beat each other to the entrance of pit lane. They're racing on. I mean, they're racing into the pits. <laughs> Steve? Mike Brad Keselowski's comment moments ago was that his car was just a little bit on the free side. Remember, Joey Logano said just the opposite. His car was a little bit tight. Right side tires going on for Brad Keselowski. No other adjustments. Oh, there it is, a chassis adjustment on the two car, and they will take four tires. Meanwhile, Joey Logano's team also changing four tires further up pit road. There are still 11 cars on the track, Larry, that haven't been to pit road since the red flag. And Trevor Bain, the surprise winner of the Daytona 500 a couple of years ago, out in front of Eric Almarola driving for Richard Petty. That number 43 has been to victory lane here seven times. Pretty much a rule of thumb, and Larry knows this. If you're going to take two cans of fuel, you might as well take four tires. You're going to be in the pits that long. So, and I don't know, Kyle doesn't need to mess around here. Kyle Busch in the 18, he needs to get on pit road because he's going to get the uh, black flag if he doesn't. Well, I think he's already received the black flag, but he'll get the black flag with the white cross, which means you're no longer being scored. Ooh, that's that real ugly black flag. Richard Petty won the Daytona 500 seven times. His number, 43. He is still the principal of this race team for Marcus Ambrose and Eric Almarola, whose car carries Petty Blue. And the number 43 for Smithfield as you're watching the ham cam on the Tampa, Florida driver as he leads the Daytona 500. That's what I, it, it always just kind of makes me chuckle sometimes. And I think, man, it took me uh, 17 years to win the 500. It took Dale 20. Some guys have never won. Some guys only won it once. Yeah, but Richard Petty won it seven times. Gosh, seven times.
don't know. Look who is joined Mr. Eric Almirola up there at the front. We're looking <laughs> at him right now. Hello. Oh, six times. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. Yeah, he got his mirror adjusted, man. He's happy now. Now, they were last on pit road before the red flag, and here they come. Whoa, Almirola, buddy. Petty. Whoa, There's about buddy. ten of them. Woo. All trying to get on pit road at the same time. Hold Almirola, dude. Petty, Kenseth, and more, Krista. Wow, that got hairy, and that's why Chad Knauss, the crew chief for this 48 car, told his driver Jimmy Johnson pit tight to the bottom. He knew it was going to be squirrely on the pit road entrance. Matt? And they reminded Matt Kenseth about his brakes. If he had too much rear brake entering pit road, four tires this stop, just like on the previous stop, 32, Steve. Matt Kurt Busch saying his car is a little bit on the loose side. They're just going to chain left side tires. Meanwhile, Eric Almirola in the 43, his car is a little bit loose. Trevor Bain on pit, pit road as well. Carl, Ambrose, or Carl Edwards, Marcus Ambrose, Dale Earnhardt Jr. also stopping in that group. And now everyone who last stopped at lap 38 has been on and off pit road. Want to take another look? Oh, yeah, wow. let's hey, do. This is one of those hate watch this moments, I can tell you. Woo, this is the biggest group of drivers we had making green flag pit stops. It all started up at the front of the pack with Eric Almirola almost bringing that entire inside line with him. Yeah, but watch this. I mean, the tires start smoking. The 21 gets into the back. I believe he got into the back of uh, the 41 car. Got a little bit of damage right there. Kurt Busch's car, the 21 got some fender damage. Leader, last year's pole sitter for the Daytona 500 in green and orange, Danica Patrick. And obviously she's in the middle of the pack of these drivers because all those drivers in front of her, they have made a green flag pit stop. And a tough break for Al Marola. He dragged equipment out of the pit box and were corrected. It is not a pass through penalty. It is a more major penalty as he carried the jack out of his pit. As Kyle Busch served, so will Almirola, Almirola a stop-and-go penalty on pit road. Danica Patrick leads the Daytona 500. 89 laps complete, 111 to go in Daytona. Last time by seven drivers, led by Danica Patrick, the race leader, came to pit road and completing the cycle of pit stops one lap later, Michael Waltrip, who picked up the lead in this race that he has won twice. So we have cycled through, and that means that number 27 of Paul Menard is your race leader. Denny Hamlin in second, and the five of Casey Kane. Remember, he had that spin at the end of pit road exiting the pits. He is on the tail end of the lead lap. And remember also Kyle Busch in an 18 car dragging equipment. He and Casey Kane were trying to get nose to tail and fight off this group of lead drivers, but they were not able to do it. Just were not quick enough. Trouble for David Reagan. His car is being pushed back to the garage area. He would be the race's second retiree joining Martin Truex Jr. And Mike, I, I believe I do see a marked improvement in the performance of the Fords. Carl Edwards now running in fourth place. We've seen uh, the two car up there. We've seen the 22 car up there. Looks like the Fords have got a pretty good race package under them tonight. Isn't it strange when we ran single car practice and single car qualifications, everybody was talking about the Richard Childress Chevrolets and the fastest being Austin Dillon. Then when we got into race trim, it was the Toyotas of Joe Gibbs Racing, and now it's those Fords. But I think I know why, Mike, and Larry knows this too. When we come to Daytona, we come with, there's two ways to come down here. You come one way with a car that was really qualified fast, a really low drag car, not a lot of drag on the car. And that car's gonna run fast by itself. Or you can come down here with one that's got a little more downforce built into it. It's not gonna be fast by itself, but it is gonna race like a beauty, man. And I think that's what Gibbs did. I think they came with cars that have downforce in them, and that's why they've been so fast. Well, the leader right now is one of those Childress Chevrolets, Paul Menard, with one of those Gibbs Toyotas. Denny Hamlin in second, the Stuart Haas Chevy of Kevin Harvick third, Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards. The fast five at 91 laps. There's another car that's creeping into the picture. There's Matt Kenseth in the 20 car spun in that earlier session, uh, got backwards on pit road, and uh, he's made a nice recovery. 
and Matt has fought his way into the top five. So you've got the uh, 11 and third, the 20 and fifth, and of course the 18th fast, but he's got to get back on the lead lap. This track has definitely changed and for the better since the six hour rain delay. When we dropped the green flag shortly after 1 p.m. Eastern time, we had five lead changes in the first hundred miles. Then the rains came. We've run 50 some laps since a little over 100 miles and we've had 20 lead changes since we restarted. 97 laps in Paul Menard your leader time for the mid race report brought to you by Fox Sports one and after the longest rain delay in the history of the Daytona 500 six hours and 22 minutes Kyle Busch led at the 100 mile mark Eric Almirola led at the 200 mile mark there have been 14 different leaders so far Daryl Waltrip who are you keeping an eye on uh, look Chris it's a no brainer <laughs> the, the guys wrecked two cars. They were old cars. They were last year's cars. They break out a brand new this year, new generation car. And the driver says it's the best car I've ever had at Daytona. He's the defending champion. He's already won the Daytona 500 once today. Jimmy Johnson to Victory Circle. Austin Dillon, he started on the pole. He dropped to the back of the pack, been riding around. Gil Martin's been kind of holding him back. He's finally let him get up there and start to race these guys. He just ran the fastest lap of the race, Larry. Jeff, Denny Hamlin came to Daytona a man on a mission, and he has backed it up with his performance. He run the Sprint Unlimited, the Budweiser Duel, and I think he'll become the first man in the history of Daytona to win those two in the Daytona 500 in the same speed weeks. Krista. Danica Patrick told me that being prepared is never a problem for her. What is is overthinking things. She is not doing that tonight. She is letting her car do the work. She's very quiet on the radio. They took two tires, and she is extremely comfortable right now. Paul Menard led the halfway lap. He's won the Brickyard 400. History, though, not on his side tonight. The last driver to win the Daytona 500 after leading the halfway lap, Davey Allison, back in 1992. Mike, the leader, 21 years since the leader at the halfway point of the Daytona 500 has gone on to win. But watch Kevin Harvick, the closer who started back of the pack, loved his car, has won a 500 before by closing in the final moments. Drivers not only racing each other, they're racing the rain here in Daytona. The Daytona 500 on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Designate a driver and enjoy the great times. 103 laps complete, 104 now. Paul Menard, the leader, over Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr., three Chevys leading Brad Keselowski's Ford, and rookie Cole Witt <laughs> being scored as the fifth what place about car. That? <laughs> that blue number 26. This is the 16th try for Tony Stewart to win the Daytona 500, and Stewart has been seeing red. Yeah, we would talk about driver's gauges, and you can look right here at the gauges that he can look at, and I want you to watch this gauge right there. It's flashing red. They don't actually have to read the numbers. If a gauge is in trouble with whatever it's hooked to, be it water pressure, oil pressure, it will start flashing. Matt, normally here, it's either water pressure or water temperature. He, met, he hit pit road. Larry, 10 laps ago, Tony Stewart reported to his team that the fuel pressure gauge was bouncing all over the place. And then the engine started going flat on exit of the corner. They held off as long as they could. They got a game plan. They had him pit. They topped the car off with fuel. They shut it off to reset the ECU. Stewart then left pit road, said, I feel like the problem is fixed. And then he said, I spoke too soon. It's back. Something amiss, possibly with the fuel pickup. Stewart is now the seventh car one lap down. In the ECU, that's the electronic control unit, the, the brain box of the electronic fuel injection. He reset it, he leaves pit road, but it still appears that he's not rectified the problems. He, he's out there about two seconds off what the leaders are running right yeah, One of the things that bothered me, Larry, was his tack went red. And I'm not sure what that means, but I think it's pretty serious. Paul Menard, Jimmy Johnson outside. Brad Kitzlowski drops low. You're riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. behind his Hendrick Chevy teammate, Jimmy Johnson, as they try to take the lead from Paul Menard. Don't you love what Chad and Jimmy said, though? They, they wrecked two cars. That those were last year's cars. We had this new car in the trailer, but we weren't real sure of it. I wonder how they feel about it now. 
And how about Cole with that rookie in the number 26? Daryl, you said the great thing about watching rookies is you just don't know. That's what everybody around him is saying right now. Hey, who's that in that 26 over there anyway? He's running pretty good. And he wrecked that car pretty severe on Wednesday in practice. His team repaired it, and he raced his way into the Daytona 500 in the Budweiser Dual Qualifier Kid's race. a good little wheel, man. He drove for Junior Motorsports. He just needed a good car to drive, and I think that uh, this weekend, his team has given him a pretty good horse. Cole Witt finished seventh in the Nationwide Series last year, racing for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He is named after famous race driver. Come on, give it to me. Cole you, Trickle? Yes, Dance yes. of Thunder, Cole Trickle. Yes. Tom Cruise character. By all means. Bet, now, if his crew chief was Harry Hogg, he'd be in Hog Heaven. You know, we'd we, be watching the ham cam again. <laughs> we had such a huge gap of different times that these drivers made green flag pit stops, and I think that's one reason we're seeing so many drivers go a lap down here because Jimmy Johnson in the 48, you're riding with him. You can see right there he's going by David Gilliland in the 38. Look how much quicker he was being pushed by his teammate, Dale Earnhardt, in that 88. Man, he came up off that second turn, and look at that gap he pulled on the 88 car. That thing is going somewhere. Menard flying on the bottom in that yellow car, three wide behind him. Keslowski in the deuce, Kurt Busch the outlaw on the outside, racing hard in the 500. Still green at 112 laps in the Daytona 500. Let's take a closer look at today's race action with Sprint. Biggest mover, Jimmy Johnson crashed on the last lap of his qualifying race. Had to start from the back with a provisional. He's up 39 spots to, to the lead. Switch now to the new Sprint family plan. Up to 10 friends and family. Get unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as low as $25 per month each on the Sprint Network. Visit Sprint.com slash speed or a Sprint store. Start your family today. Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Nobody's talked much about Rick Hendrick's team this week. Even their drivers were mentioning others as favorites to win the 500, but two of those four are out front right now. Oh yeah, the cream rises to the top, and we know we know Jimmy Johnson is gonna be a factor in this race. We knew that, we knew Dale Jr. was. Dale Jr. had been second like the last three or four times down here. Jimmy's the defending champion. Krista. Paul Menard brings the RCR Chevy in extremely fast this week, all at Daytona. Right now he's saying just a little bit tight, just a little bit tight, two tires on the 27. Meanwhile, the four also taking two tires. Kevin Harvick has been really solid tonight. Jamie McMurray in and out, along with the 40 of Landon Castle. And I neglected to mention on the last round of pit stops, the uh, 23, Alex Bowman, a rookie was penalized for too fast on pit road. More takers this time? Yes, at least a couple. Feeling off to the inside. Whoa, got a car around. It looks like it might be the 31 car. It's the no, seven. No, it's the seven car. Almost got Casey Kane in that five. Another rookie, Michael Annette, in his first drive for Tommy Baldwin racing. Yeah, he got down in that really wet part of the pit road entrance down there, and it just turned around with him. Nice job of hanging on to it, actually. So they'll have to change four tires after flat spotting those. And he nearly collected Kane, who had his own problems on pit road earlier. And my apologies to Ryan Newman. I just saw the black and yellow car, and the first thing I thought was uh, the 31 car. Casey Kane, too fast entering pit road. But he was trying to get out of the way of Michael Annette. There is no, I mean, I know speeding is speeding, but I, that is why Casey Kane was speeding. Brad Keslowski brings his Ford to the point, taking the lead from Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Kurt Busch on the inside in the 41. And let's show a replay of what Larry was talking about entering pit road. The seven of uh, 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 Annette is going so fast, there was no way he could really get it checked up. And Casey Kane had to take a real, he had to gas it right there to keep Barnett from getting in the side of him. I would have to say Casey Kane's spotter, Kevin Hamlin, was telling him what was going on there behind him. The penalty would certainly be less damage than if Annette had spun into him. Well, just think about it. Casey spun leaving pits earlier right. tonight, and now that time almost had a calamity getting in. Yeah, he was already a lap down. 
four cars to the pit lane this time, led by Brian Vickers in the 55, Denny Hamlin, Bobby Labonte, and Ricky Stenhouse. Matt? And the 11 guys up on the wall. Hamlin says the car is tight. They're going to try to work on that condition more with an air pressure adjustment. Caleb Hurd, the new member of the 11 crew, hits the second can of fuel. This will be a four-tire stop. So that way they can go back to the two-tire cycle next time. Cole Witt also in completing service, and Casey Mears has been black flagged. They'll stop scoring his car if he doesn't pit this time around. Kyle Busch is in. Jeff Gordon right behind Kyle. And Mears will come in and serve his penalty. Scheduled green flag pit stops. A lot of sparks from behind Boy. Kyle Busch's car as he stops, Matt. And Busch said nothing on the radio about any possible issue. They're going to make a wedge adjustment. Kyle said the car would extremely free, Steve, through the trial. And Jeff Gordon on pit road, just right side tires, long fuel stop for the 24, but just rights. Sounds like those Gibbs cars who we've been bragging on all night long, all of a sudden, you know, one, Hamlin's really tight in the 11, and uh, got uh, Kyle Busch in the 18, he's really loose, so they got to get, uh, get their act together here as we get down near the end of the day, or the night, or the race. You see Brad Keselowski in that two lead. He should have to be on pit road here pretty quick, but Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Dale Hart Jr. in the 88, they can run a few more laps because they were two of the last drivers to hit pit road during that last set of green flag stops. They yeah. are in the trunk of Tony Stewart, who thought he had fuel pressure issues. Now, Casey Kane angry about that penalty, but it's a computerized timing system on pit road. Kind of like those red light cameras, and here's what he said. We were gonna get run over by a wrecked car because of their wet pit road and they're gonna penalize us? Yeah, we're gonna go another lap here. I, I, I feel for him. I really do. I understand we saw what happened, and uh, it's a shame, but, you know, the rules are the rules, and that's the, that's the job of the officials to, to make the calls. Well, and I think to add frustration, he was already a lap down fighting to get it back, and here he has to serve this penalty, so it just continues to go the wrong way. You're going to see him right here. He looks in the mirror and he looks out the side. He, Whoa, I got to get going here. And you see the fire come out the side after that. So he saw him coming. He knew he had to speed up or get rammed into. He has a great point, but the timing system is computerized. The rule is finite. I don't think there's room in that rule for interpretation. Well, in my rule book, there would be, but not in NASCAR's. The Penske team cars in together once again. Keselowski the two, Logano the 22. And Steve, on these green flag stops, they've been pitting together, so they have a drafting partner leading pit road. Yeah, exactly, Mike, and we anticipate both cars taking on four tires on this pit stop. You're watching Brad Keselowski to your right. They do, in fact, change four tires. Small chassis adjustment for Brad Keselowski. He likes his car otherwise. Logano getting his left side tires on it again. No chassis adjustments to Logano's number 22. Thanks, Steve. 123 laps complete this time by Jimmy Johnson trying to win the Daytona 500 for the second year in a row. It's wingman and teammate Dale Earnhardt Jr. They're 1-2 in Daytona. One hundred twenty five of two hundred laps complete in the Daytona 500. That's Kyle Busch out in front. A lap down, Jimmy Johnson, the 48-year leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Carl Edwards up at the front. How about our pole okay. center? Now, this could, could miss us, all right? And the sun could come up tomorrow. Neither are likely. Everybody not watching the racetrack is watching the weather radar and that big storm system and the lightning strikes out in the Gulf. So Matt Kenseth stopping in front of Matt Yoakum. Kenseth has certainly lost the handle on this 20 machine. He was saying it's twitchy and darty on exit. And since lap 100, taking two tires, since lap 100, it's been chattering the right rear. At one point, he told Jason Ratcliffe, I almost lost it. I barely held on to it. Definitely have lost that handle. But, but think about what I said earlier. 
I think the Gibbs teams came down here with a little bit different car package. And I think that because of the weather and we're racing at night, that may not be working out so well for them. A car with low drag and low downforce might be the hot way to go tonight because of the weather. All right, big pack of cars on pit road, Daryl. 11 of them. Krista? The struggle for Jimmy Johnson was just getting to the bottom to be able to pit. One thing that he likes, though, is this style of racing. He said push drafting never fit his style. This does. Meanwhile, Danica Patrick also in. We talked about how she led those laps. She's just trying to stay comfortable and confident. Steve? Krista, two tires for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Steve Letart, the crew chief, reminding him, leave on me, not when the jack dropped. They wanted to get enough fuel in that 88. Green flag pit stops and still there, Clint Boyer, Matt. Uh, Toyota, Clint Boyer on pit road. They started the change of tires. He says, guys, it is starting to blow up. They call to me the range the hood and see if it might be some minor issue. Boyer has gotten out of the race car, obviously upset and frustrated. His chances for the 500 gone. What a shame. He's running pretty good and uh, they got an engine problem. There's smoke coming out from the hood and he knew there was something wrong with it. So uh, out of the race. About Brian Scott in that orange 33 car there in the middle of the pack. He's actually the leader of the race. Now, he was one of the last drivers to pit during that last cycle, so he can run a few more laps here, as well as Justin Algar, Michael Waltrip, and Ryan Newman. Yeah, he's been really impressive in that 33 car. That's one of Childress's cars. He's done a whale of a job in this thing. He's coming in. He's bringing her on pit road, I can tell you that. And coming in hot, up from the Nationwide Series where he has 142 starts, two second place finishes. For Brian Scott, rookie Justin Allgaier, and Ryan Newman on pit road with him. And we cycle around to our leader is once again, Michael Waltrip. My brother is an interesting dude, I gotta tell you. I don't know how he does it, I've never been able to figure it out. But he always finds a way to be in the front at Daytona when it counts. And you know what? There's weather in the area, and he knows how. He, he's won this race, a rain-shortened race here, a few years ago. But, Darrell, I think he's going to have to come to pit road, and I think you're seeing right, he's headed there yeah. right now. Josh Wise just ahead of him, driving for Phil Parsons Racing in a car that finished top 10 in the 500 last year. And here's Michael's stop. Krista? It'll be four tires and fuel for Michael Waltrip. One issue that he had earlier in the race, similar to other drivers, having trouble with the radio. He had to change radios when he went back racing, Matt. And catching up with Clint Boyer, he's walked from his race car, heading back to the hauler. Can you even begin to put into words the disappointment and frustration of losing the motor? Nah, it's just a frustrating day. Um, you know, from first the rain. I mean, if it was going to blow up, I wish it had blew up four hours ago, you know. I could have been home watching, but... Uh, just disappointing. The guys work so hard for this race. And everybody's out there having fun, and we broke our toy. Thanks, Matt. Very dejected Clint Boyer. And we talked about the strength of the four drivers. How about Carl Edwards in that 99? His teammate Greg Bifflin, the 16, up here leading the Daytona 500 with about 70 laps to go. Boy, there's something wrong with that 20 car. Matt Kent's a yellow car down on the bottom here. They just blew by him. Carl Edwards, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, and Joey Logano, the front five, as Clint Boyer climbs out. His night's over. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., won the 500 in 2004. This is his 15th running of the Great American Race, and now he has led in 10 of those 15 tries. Here's the pass on the 99 of Carl Edwards. And I don't think there's any mistake in it. These guys have been told there could be some weather coming because I, I see a lot of intensity. Look at the 18 trying to force in front of, a, of, of the uh, 43 dark car of Elmer I mean, these guys are starting to make some pretty bold moves here. Watch Dale Jr. They're not messing around right now. They're going like it's going to be the last lap. Well, watch how Junior drives. I, I, I love to watch the guy because look where his hands are. He puts his right hand back over here going down the straightaway. And when he gets to the corner, he usually slides that right hand. Look, slides that right hand right over on top of the left, back to the right. All right, let's take a closer look at tonight's race with Sprint. Fastest lap of the race, the pole sitter, Austin Dillon, number three, 2.8. 
204.3. Switch now to the new Sprint family plan. Up to 10 friends and family get unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as low as $25 a month each on the Sprint network. Go to a Sprint store and start your family today. See, Mike, I think that's the beauty of the fuel injection and the EC unit, ECU unit. That thing will adjust the engine to the conditions. And the conditions are ideal. We got pretty, pretty good air right now. It's, it's cool, it's moist, and you can make max power right now. And that unit is tuning that engine to perfection. You know, Daryl and Mike, we have 63 laps to go. With the way that last set of green flag stops went, every driver out there has to make one more stop. And I think every driver can make it on one more stop. And those pit stops should start about lap 158, roughly about 20 laps from now. Another top contender has fallen by the wayside. Tony Stewart has taken his car to the garage after fuel pressure problems. And the 20 of Matt Kenseth may have had an issue, Matt. My during his pit stop, we told you from lap 100 on, Kenseth had been complaining about his right rear tire chattering, and he had a hard time holding out of the race car. Now, the good news for Kenseth fans here in the pit, when they took the, the tires off, they looked at the right rear, a huge gash. The tires still held air, but the Goodyear engineers look things over. They think that might be what Kenseth was feeling in his race car, and he hasn't reported anything since. The crew says no news is good news, Steve. And Matt Kyle, uh, excuse me, Kurt Busch in the 41, rather, still running strong, but his crew chief, Daniel Canoes, has told him that they, he has a quarter panel brace in the right rear quarter panel that's broken and is causing some of that sheet metal, that right rear quarter panel, to flap. So they're a little bit concerned about that in the 41 bits of Kurt Busch. Thanks, Steve. 139 of 200 laps are complete. There's Jamie McMurray Chevy. Kurt Busch on the outside. A Chevy in front, Dale Jr. and three fast forwards right behind him. You can enter for a chance to win the new 2014 Chevy SS and a trip for two to Hendrick Motorsports to meet Team Chevy drivers Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane. Visit winyourchevy.com now. You know, Mike Larry, it's always the little things. A fender brace, a radio harness, a fuel pickup. It's not, uh, on the uh, 78 car earlier today, the, the, the oil pump belt came off. It's the little things that just seem you try to control, but you can't. We've got quite a dogfight up near the front of the pack for the drivers that are one lap down. It's been going back and forth between Kyle Busch in the 18, the second car in the inside line, and Casey Mears in that 13. That's the first driver's one lap down. Remember, caution comes out. Whoever's the driver that's a lap down closest to the front gets his lap back by virtue of the free pass. You saw Tony Stewart sitting in his car as it's still under repair in the garage. Krista? Yeah, Tony Stewart continues to sit helmet on, but you see all the uh, the brain trusts of Stewart Haas Racing, Matt Borland, competition director, Greg Zipidelli, Scott Maxim, uh, engineer for Hendrick Motorsports, and these are Hendrick engines in these Stewart Haas cars. They're all over here looking and diagnosing. They're changing the fuel cell. Uh, we did the report earlier about the ECU, the electron control unit. Uh, right now it's changing the fuel cell. You see uh, disappointment in Tony Stewart's eyes. We know the Hendrick group had some engine issues before qualifying, but this is not relative whatsoever. They, they lost bottom end. This is absolutely a fuel pressure issue. And, and for Tony Stewart, it's devastating. I mean, he has really, he's rehabbed, he's worked hard. His target was to be back in the car in Daytona. He, he made his target. I know he wanted to come down here, run well, get some racing under his belt, see how he was gonna feel. This is devastating to him and his uh, recuperation. As an owner, Stewart still has three cars in the mix, however. <laughs> Riding with Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88, he's looking at those two Roush Fenway drivers behind him, and he's been going up in front of Carl Evers in the 99, back down in front of Greg Biffle in the 16. Yeah, that 88 is showing some strength right now, Larry. He's been able to hold those two Fords off uh, by doing that move, moving in and out from, from one side to the other. But uh, he got a little lead there. Uh, Might have gotten out a little too far. Let's see what he can do. Look at those eyes. How can you drive a car 204 miles an hour looking back? I mean, that takes some talent right there. And folks, don't ever underestimate how fast these guys are going, how close they are to running together, and, and how hard it is. It's just not as easy as they make it look. These guys make it look easy because they're the best drivers in the world. 
Dale Jr.'s grandfather, Ralph, was a standout in NASCAR's sportsman division. His father, Dale Earnhardt, seven-time NASCAR champion and Daytona 500 winner. Carl Edwards breaks up that party, putting his Roush Fenway Ford out in front. His teammate, Greg Biffle, the 16, leading the inside lane. We're inside of 150 miles to go. Dare I say we've been caution free since the green flag after the rain delay here in Daytona. Uh, is going to crash big. Crash out of turn number four. A multi car pileup. Eric Almarola, his car all turn up. That is Michael Waltrip who will not win his third Daytona 500. David Gilliland's car is crashed. Almarola's gone straight to the garage with his number 43. Gilliland stuck in the mud and Danica Patrick. And, and Mike, Danica, she pounded that outside wall head on first. Let's watch the action coming out of turn number four. And let's have a look for Eric Almarola on the right side in the 43. That it looked like the 33 car of uh, Brian Scott, something. And watch Danica right there. Man, that was a lick. Ryan Scott down right next to and Kevin oh. Harvick makes contact in the yep. four. That's what shot Scott. It. Yep. That's what shot the 33 up the hill. I knew something had to happen because he uh, just abruptly the 33 abruptly turned to the right and went up the hill. We got our pole sitter involved. Danica Austin Dillon Danica Patrick Michael Waltrip. Among those involved. There's Walter coming off the outside wall. He collects Justin Allgaier in the 51. Paul Menard at 27. Been fast all night. Paul just can't catch a break down here this week. David Gilliland into the mud and Ryan Newman taking evasive action. Here's the ham cam on Almarola's car. Hard hit with a safer barrier for last year's pole sitter. Now here comes Danica. Watch that green car shoot across the track. Are you ID? Oh man. Okay. God, what the hell happened? Patrick hit the wall in an area of that straightaway that is not protected by the safer barrier. That was nearly 200 miles an hour into solid concrete. And she had such high hopes after finishing eighth here a year ago and leading laps in the Daytona 500, not the way she wanted it to end. Yeah, you see the four car of uh, Kevin Harvey. He moves up a little bit, gets into the left front of Brian Scott in the 33, and from there it's on. It's just on from there. Um, Elmerola on the outside there in the 43, he gets sideways, comes back down. Little damage Boy. for Casey Kane and Menard. Jeff Gordon just barely gets through. There's our post sitter, Austin Dillon. Three of the Richard Childress racing drivers involved. Almost a fourth had Ryan Newman in the 31 not gotten stopped there on the front stretch. 
You've heard from Danica, Michael Waltrip and David Gilliland both climbed out of their cars. Most everyone else has driven away. Here is your leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. at 147 laps. And this storm system is about 30 miles away, the front edge of it. And look what's going on out in the Gulf of Mexico with all that lightning activity. And considering Dale Earnhardt Jr. could run to probably at least lap 170 with these cautions, maybe even further than that, I would not be surprised to see them stay out because you can't make it on one stop from here. Oh, yeah. I think I'd stay out right now for sure. Now, good news for Brian Scott. He came to pit road, made repairs. He's back on the racetrack. Carl and Rick Hendricks standing behind Dale Jr.'s crew chief, Steve Letart, and now stepping away. Letart from Maine began as a floor sweeper at Hendrick Motorsports, came from a racing family, came south, wanted to be in the sport, and now he is the race caller and strategist for the sport's most popular driver. And, and of course, everybody knows that this is his last year at Dale Jr.'s crew chief. He'll be doing a, going into the TV booth next year for NBC. And I, I still think that that's going to be a motivation for Steve Letart and Dale Jr. I think they're going to try to accomplish things that neither one of them have ever done, and Letart's never won the 500, so it'll be a big deal. You see Danica's car being hauled away right now. They're loading Michael Waltrips on the rollback. Damage to the 43 of Eric Almirola and David Gilliland's car getting a ride. Mikey well, hadn't had a very good speed weeks. He had uh, crashed in the uh, in the duels and uh, then then again tonight. So tough, tough week for uh, for little brother. You know, when I look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88, our leader, he has finished second in three of the last four Daytona 500s. He had five second place finishes in 2013, including finishing second to Jimmy Johnson here a year ago. I think he's about over finishing second. Tony Stewart has returned to the racetrack after a long time in the garage, 27 laps down. Well, Larry, I know we've had some interesting uh, top 10s and top 15s, but right now, if you look at our top 10, the, it's, it's, it's go time. It's show time. The guys that you would expect to be up front, the guys that you think could win, the cream has risen to the top and they are ready to win the Daytona 500. Experience pays off. Clean up in turn four from this 12 car pileup. We're close to getting back to green. Pit roads open at 149 laps, Krista. Chad Canal is telling his driver, Jimmy Johnson, make sure you bring it tight to the wall. Tight to the wall, the call for the 48. And there you see him go, Matt. Bain with the 99 pit about four versus two. Carl thought tires might be more important, Steve, but Jimmy Phoenix said lefts are not wearing. We're going two. Right side tires on the 88 for Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt. And we think, I heard a report that the 16 was going to take fuel only. We'll confirm. Frank Biffle won the race off pit road, and our graphic shows fuel only for Biffle. Two tires for most of the rest of the leaders. And Tommy Baldwin's team, a gambler, fuel only for Reed Sorensen to move him up into the top 10 among those that stopped. Darrell, let's go back and take a closer look at what happened between the four of Kevin Harvick and the 33 of Brian Scott. Well, we're three wide. We see that. And I think what happens here is the 33 gets alongside the right quarter panel right there of Kevin Harvick. And they make just enough contact that it causes Harv's car to run up the track a little bit. That got him into Brian Scott. Then from there, it was just on. It was a wreck. But I really think that the 33 got into the back right quarter panel of the four car and got him in. That got them together, and then that's what started the wreck. I don't. It, did, it just didn't appear to me that that, that uh, Kevin in the four went up the hill that much. As much as he got touched, kind of got him loose. Let's take a ride with Eric Almirola. Fifty miles to go in this Daytona 500. Excuse me, fifty laps to go. We'll be right back.
Thanks, Greg. 48 laps to go. Now, here are the cars that were involved in the wreck. Danica Patrick is in the garage. So is Paul Menard, Michael Waltrick, Eric Almarola, and David Gilliland. Everyone else was able to make repairs. Yeah, and hey, Larry, what do you reckon you could run the 40 in? About two times that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, this is... This is it, it, it's what we've talked about all night, Mike. These guys getting three wide, and that's where they were, and that's what really kind of caused this mess. Krista? Down with Michael Waltrip outside the care center. Before we go green, Michael, I know you want to see a replay. You haven't been able to see exactly what happened. What do you feel like happened from your seat? Well, I saw the cars get together ahead of me, and I uh, let off the gas and was coasting uh, under control, and someone behind me wasn't. And uh, I'm not really sure which car started it, but a black one ended it for me. He ran me over pretty hard, and... Uh, it was fun racing with the, with the leaders. I stayed in touch with the lead pack, and I know, Krista, this, uh, this battle to the finish is going to be intense, and I wanted to get the old peak Blue Def Toyota right up in the middle of it, but luckily I've got AAA, so I'm going to file a claim, and we'll be able to fix this baby up and have it at Talladega in a couple of months. Thanks, Michael. Glad you're okay. Tough break for our Fox Sports colleague trying to win his third 500. Greg Biffle took fuel only on that stop. He's our leader in the 3M4, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the National Guard Chevy alongside as they get the green flag. 47 laps to go. And I and I think Michael nailed it. I mean the gloves are off. This, this is going to be a this is going to be a fight to the end now. Uh, I mean these guys. There, there's weather. We know that. The race is coming down to the uh, end here. This is when it gets real serious. It's entirely likely the next flag could end this race. How big a gamble, Larry, not taking tires for Biffle? I don't think it's a gamble because we've seen racing at night as Jimmy Finning told Carl Edwards, tires are not wearing, tires are not making a difference. We want to stay up front out of the eye of the storm. Remember in the un Unlimited, they ran 60 laps and never changed tires. And so I don't think you have to worry about the tires. I think they're pretty good. Tires versus track position. Both of Tommy Baldwin's cars in the top 10. He got a top 10 finish last year here. Reed Sorensen and Michael Annette, ninth and 10th. But boy, they've got work to do. Biffle, Earnhardt, Johnson, Edwards, Keslowski, the front five. Yeah, Michael Annette, Reed Sorensen, they're side by side. You see them back there on the fifth row, just in front of Kyle Busch in that 18. Well, we see that four car, and he must have some damage from that wreck because saw quite a bit of sparks coming out from the side of that car look like it from the back jeff gordon we haven't talked about him much uh, for a while oh and man look at kurt bush in a 41 car that quarter panel that fender brace is definitely creating a parachute on the right side of his car larry mentioned kyle bush he got the free pass on that caution flag for that 12 car pileup that put him back on the lead lap and right into the thick of things. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's up in the top 10 already, and he just got the free pass. I think that just goes to show you what a great race car he has. And, that, and what an interesting paint job he has on his car. One in 100. You know what that means? One peanut out of 100 makes it into an M&M. &M. Now, I had to find out from Cal what it meant, because I knew it meant something, and he told me that. He's on the inside next to his brother as Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Greg Biffle continue to battle for the lead. See those two Joe Gibbs drivers right there side by side. Matt Kenseth in the 20 on the bottom. Denny Hamlin in the 11 up top. They had made their way back in the pack. Now here they come back toward the front. I'll tell you what, though, that 88 car is pretty impressive. He's been able to hang up there in the front. Uh, Jimmy Johnson looks like he's going to try to get up here and go with Biffle maybe, but even still, Junior's hanging right there, man. This is a contract year for Greg Biffle with Roush Fenway Racing. Other teams have kind of sniffed a little interest, and wouldn't his stock go up if he could win this 500? Steve. Mike, interesting note on that 16 car. Crew chief Matt Pusha told me this morning they built two brand new super speedway cars with the hopes of running here in Daytona. But the car Greg's in now actually ran last year. It was just had had better numbers in the wind tunnel, and it just had more speed. So a tried and true race car for Greg Biffle. Greg Biffle is between a rock and a hard place right now because he's got two fast drivers and he just keeps going back and forth blocking Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. There he goes to the bottom to block Earnhardt. And of course that messes up the draft off his car, which, you know, it'll help Junior a little bit and then he'll go over and help Jimmy Johnson at 48 a little bit. In the meantime, Junior's trying to side draft, watch him get over next to the 48, get a little pull there 
Here's Carl Edwards. Carl would like to get up in the mix in the 99, and there's Brad Keselowski. So, bunch of Fords up here ganging up on the Chevys right now. Back behind them, a whole bunch running three wide. 43 laps to go in the Daytona 500 after a six and a half hour rain delay. Since then, we've had just one caution flag, but it was a big one, a 12 car pile up. Here's your Ram race summary. Greg Biffle, the first of 27 cars on the lead lap. He's one of 19 race leaders, 36 lead changes. Just three caution flags. Well, Guts, Biffle, you know, Lauren, Ram. Yeah, Biffle, Biffle bragged on his car. Remember qualifying? He was so excited. And he said, man, we finally got speed back in our cars. He's been happy all week with the thing. And here he is, man, out front when it counts. He's up front, but Daryl, he's looked like three-lane Wayne up there. Up to the bottom, <laughs> down to the bottom, up to the top, right up the middle. And now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pulls right alongside. Yeah, he wasn't able to get to the bottom quick enough that time because that 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. was right there with his teammate, Biffle's teammate, Carl Edwards, in the 99 right behind him. Yeah, Larry, I, I'm convinced that the last uh, 100 miles or so, that 88 car has been the best car. He's been able to run up front. He's been able to get out front. And uh, right now, he's alongside of Biffle. Edwards there behind him gives him a little shot. They probably will be able to clear Biffle and take the lead. That is some tight drafting right there amongst that front 10 or 15. Look how tight they are. Two by two, just all over each other. And back behind them, here's a, just some three wide racing going on. There just isn't room on Noah's Ark for all this. Three by three. You know, if you're up front, you're just hoping nothing happens. If you're back in the back, you're trying to make something happen. You want something to happen. 40 laps to go, 100 miles left in the Daytona 500. Let's go back to the garage in Krista. Danica Patrick has walked out of the care center. Danica, was that the hardest hit you've ever taken, and, and how do you feel right now? <laughs> I don't know. It feels like they're all pretty hard, unfortunately. Um, I think more than anything, I'm just upset that the GoDaddy car felt really good. It was the best car I'd had all speed weeks and um, seemed like we could catch whoever and seemed like we could move around and make lanes, help lanes out and move, move around and move forward at the end of the day. And uh, so I felt like everything was going pretty well. So it's just upsetting, you know, I think that it's a sort of culmination of sitting around all day and, you know, so uh, it's a bummer, but it's, you know, that's kind of the excitement of speedway racing is that anything can happen and um, it was unfortunate that I was on the short end of the accident but uh, that's the kind of thing that happens and you know I appreciate everyone sticking around and watching and we'll go get them at Phoenix. Glad you're okay. Thanks Danica. Thanks Krista Daler. Whoa, here we go. Big crash again turn four. It's calamity corner. There's rookie Reed Sorensen sliding down off the banking. Big damage to the forward of Marcus Ambrose number nine and caution waves with 38 laps to go. Marcus Emeralds with a bunch of damage there. The seven car. Something, something seemed, uh, somebody broke loose in the pack. I couldn't tell if there was contact. Rookie Michael Lynette, heavy damage on his pilot Chevy. Marcus Ambrose. And let's have a look. Watch the three of our pole sitter, Austin Dillon. We're under caution in the Daytona 500. Welcome back to the Daytona 500 under the caution flag for a seven car pile up at turn number four. Let's take you back to the lap before the crash and look at the number three of our pole sitter, Austin Dillon. All right, Austin Dillon in the middle here, uh, three wide, you know, and he's caught in the middle. Now watch this thing. She gets real loose with him right there and he has to catch it. He, he did a great job of saving the car, but either there was something going on with the tires or the car just got violently loose. Now we head on down to turn three. And once again, watch the back of the three car. The car starts to get loose like you saw before. He chases it up the hill. 42 was maybe inching down a little bit. Uh, 
Kyle Larson in a 42, and they came together, and that's what caused that wreck. Just nowhere for Mike Lynette in a seven, Casey Kane in the five. It's nowhere for him to go. I think there was something going on with that three car because off of two down there, it got sideways. He goes into three, it starts to get sideways. He washes up into Kyle Larson in a 42, and then from there on, it was on. I think Kyle Larson was coming down the hill a little bit. The three car got a little loose, started up the hill a little bit, and they made contact. And toward the back, add to the cars damaged. Bobby Labonte, Ryan Newman, and Brian Scott. Had a bit of collateral damage from this one. Caution with 36 laps to go as Austin Dillon makes contact with Kyle Larson, the circuit's two most heralded rookies of the season get together in turn four. It's been an exhausting Daytona 500 and 34 laps remain with Dale Earnhardt Jr., the leader over Greg Biffle and Carl Edwards. Under our fourth caution, Jr. trying to win his second ever Daytona 500. If you tuned in a little bit late, you know that there was a rain delay of six hours and 22 minutes. Kyle Busch had the lead at the break, but once they resumed with the threat of more rain on the way, three wide, four deep, aggressive driving, seemed like everybody. Jeff Hammond was racing towards the front. Casey Kane having a spin-out problem. They had pit problems out there with the 18 car, took equipment out of the pits and got penalized and went down a lap. And then a 12 car wreck on lap 145. Looked like Harvick moved up a little, got into Brian Scott. There wasn't a lot of room there. And a number of drivers involved that had promising nights. Including Danica, uh, Danica Packard right there who led, led the 500, hit the wall extremely hard. You saw what happened inside the car with Danica. And then 39 laps to go. This is an eight-car wreck. Austin Dillon, the return of the three-car at the Daytona 500. And Kyle Larson, one of the rookies involved as well, shaking up the field. Let's check in with Chris Devota, who's with one of the rookies. Yeah, highly touted rookie Kyle Larson. You were able to see that replay there. You kind of shook your head. Is what you saw happen on the monitor what you felt happened in the car? Uh, yeah, it's just kind of a long day. I got in the wall lap one and uh, then blew the right rear and spun out. So we had a rough start from the go of it, but um, just kind of rode around the whole race there and finally got into lucky dog position. So we raced him pretty hard there. And uh, I just hold the middle line and I don't know if Austin got loose and shuffled up track. and. Got into me and uh, turned it sideways, but a uh, uh, really long day. So can't wait to get to Phoenix and try and do better. Um, been in Daytona a lot, so it's, it sucks to uh, end it like this. But like I said, we'll go to Phoenix and try and rebound it and uh, get some momentum built up. Thanks, Kyle. Mike might make this rookie battle even more intense. Certainly. Thanks, Krista. The top 15 did not stop under this caution. We asked you to show us how to get ready for race day, so let's take a KFC social media pit stop to get a look. How do you KFC? It's Sunday. That deserves a meal for kings. There you go. That's uh, how you KFC right there. Chad Knaus, crew chief for Jimmy Johnson, the defending champion of both the Sprint Cup Series and the Daytona 500. His driver in fourth place right now behind Dale Earnhardt Jr., Greg Biffle, and Carl Edwards. And, and, and Chad is a perfect example of what we're talking about, about everybody's intensity has picked up. Chad, parking orders. Earlier today, they were just adjusting on the mirror and messing with the car and a little wedge and a little air and a little this. But now, now, it's all on the line and it's time to get it done. Out of the race, Martin Truex, engine, Clint Boyer, engine. David Gilliland, Eric Almirola, Michael Waltrick, Danica Patrick, Kyle Larson, Michael Annette, all with crash damage. Tony Stewart, David Reagan, many laps down after repairs. So too Paul Menard, Casey Kane, and A.J. Allmendinger. Now most of our leaders pitted with 50 to go, which is well outside the fuel window, but I think with the number of cautions, everybody would be good to go. 82 miles left to race, 32 laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Carl Edwards, Greg Biffle in the 16, trying to deny Jr. his second Daytona 500 victory, but that Chevy is out in the wind. 
We saw early in the race on a restart, Car uh, Kurt Busch get out too far ahead and the field passed him by. Yeah. What'll happen to Junior here? I, I think he's just right. Uh, he made a nice restart there. He's gonna be able to work whichever line is coming. He can move to the right or the left. And uh, so I think that restart was perfect. He didn't get so far that they got a big run on him. You know, after qualifying last Sunday, I think we were asking, where are the Hendrick drivers? Well, I think we found them. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is up there leading, and Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon, the 48 and the 24, they're right there in the thick of things as well. Well, yeah, But the guy in the 20 car, Matt Kenseth, we know how strong he is down here, Larry. And he had trouble down here, or had trouble earlier in the race with the right rear tire, and I knew there was something wrong. That's why he fell back. But now you got Kyle Busch's teammate, you got the 20 car of Kenseth, and the Gibbs's cars are starting to group up to make a run here. Biffle on the inside of the front. Kyle Busch made a nice move in that 18 to pull up behind Matt Kenseth. Those two Toyotas you spoke of. It's Chevy versus Ford on the front. And plus Hamlin is lurking over there behind the 24 of Jeff Gordon. So uh, all of a sudden, the, it looks like it's going to be a Hendrick uh, Roush Gibbs battle here. Matt? Mike Carl Edwards stayed out on the last caution, but when he did pit the previous uh, stop, Jimmy Fittig told him before he even left pit road, save fuel, save fuel, save fuel. They were gonna be a little over a lap short. Carl went into fuel conservation mode. Then when they got the caution, they are good to the end, as is Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. The biggest concern, are they good for a green-white checker? If we can't complete the distance and run under caution at 200 laps. NASCAR will make up to three attempts to end this race under the green flag. We just saw Reed Sorensen in that 36 car, Tommy Baldwin racing. There he is running into the seventh position here with 30 laps to go in the Daytona 500. And if he finishes in the top 10, guess what? Kids eat free at the old Golden Corral. Coming around to 29 laps to go. How about one more need for speed? Crank it up. Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Greg Biffle's Ford. Boy, that 88 car is strong, Larry. Uh, uh, that restart, he got out there. He can go on either lane. He can go left, he can go right. But here comes that 16 car. My gosh, did you see that side draft? What a thing of beauty. That was perfect. He went right up against Dale Earnhardt Jr., right to that cushion of air, and then it catapulted him off the 88 car. And he car. busted right out of that bubble of air and took the lead. Now he has his teammate, at Roush Fenway, Carl Edwards be right behind him with Junior on the outside in a Chevrolet. I still just think the guy that kind of keep an eye on is that 20 car. We know how strong those Toyotas are, and he's got himself up there right in the third spot. And he might be a guy that can make some moves. We've seen 11 do it. We've seen him do it. And Biffle up high in front of Earnhardt. Here comes Edwards. Biffle down low. Greg Biffle everywhere. They're going to have to change the bearings out in that steering column after this racing Greg Biffle's car. Yeah, they just have to put a cooler on the old steering box, keep her nice and cool, because Biffle will wheel that thing to death. Eric Almirola back in the race after the crash damage repaired. Brian Vickers on to pit road. 26 laps left. If Mother Nature allows, Oh, I think we're going to make it to the end. I don't think there's any problem there. Not but sure. Daryl, every driver in that pack is driving like it's the last lap, because it could be. Well, they may not. They may not be as confident as I am. We're going to make it to the end. But uh, 
There goes Carl Edwards in the 99. He said he's going to get up there and get him a little lead. Three wide. Big stack up here. He's got Matt Kenseth right with him in that yellow 20 car. Matt's car is a, a little dicey. Matt's car moves around a little bit more, and I'd like to see it move around, but I think that's because it's just nice and free, and he's probably running. It makes it run fast. When I look at this water cars, three by three by three by three, it's not Mother Nature that has me concerned right now. 25 laps to go, 62 and a half miles around this two and a half mile trioval. You give us about 20 more minutes, we're going to give you a great race. NASCAR on Fox, side by side. Getting to be hold your breath time in the 56 Daytona 500. 21 laps to go for Chevy Toyota. Leading the way and look at that pack. It is one second from first to 22nd place. Yeah, you, you know, Mike, all this race long, you had to be able to, you, you wanted to be given and taken. You had to give and, and now if you give, you're going to get taken out. That's really what it comes down to. You can't give anymore. You got, you, you're going to get taken out if you do. Fifty miles of racing remain. And here's your sprint, 20 to go. On point, Carl Edwards in that Roush Fenway Ford number 99. Hasn't been to victory lane since Richmond right after Labor Day. Hungry for a Daytona 500 win. But Matt Kenseth in that 20 car, he faded about the middle portion of the race. Back up near the front here with 20 to go, trying to get his third Daytona 500 win. I thought the strongest car I've seen in the latter part of this race has been that 88 car. I know right now he's running in third place, but he's been able to get the lead and get by people, past people. I like an Earnhardt at Daytona. 22 cars are in position to win it. If Lady Luck rides along and they can get to the front of this lead lap, that's your sprint, 20 to go. 
I'll tell you another driver that has kind of appeared on the scene now that we're 20 to go. We call him the closer. We call him Mr. Where Did He Come From? Kevin Harvick in that four car sitting there working on the top five right now. Krista? Something else to keep in mind, he has the freshest tires of the leaders that are out there. He pitted just a little bit after this, the rest of the guys. He also has more fuel than anyone. So should it go to a green-white checker? Harvick has plenty. Yeah, he's got a nice insurance policy there with the fuel and the tires. He and Jeff Gordon both pitted on lap 152. Yeah, if we go to green-white checkered or overtime, as we like to call it, about everybody else up there, they would be in trouble as far as Sunoco race fuel. You know, Larry, you think about Carl Edwards. Remember what a rough speed weeks he had last year? And, and we spent all Friday morning together doing a media tour, a satellite media tour. And Carl, I, I, I got to tell you, Larry, he's not an emotional guy, but he got a little emotional about talking about winning this race for Jimmy Finney and for, for Ford and how he wanted to get back to Victory Circle. He wants this badly. Jimmy Finney, his crew chief, won this race with Bobby Allison back in 1988. And look at the 36. Who would have thought? Reed Sorensen for Tommy Baldwin Racing up in the top four with 17 to go. Like I've said, anybody can win this 500. And he's not just anybody. He's a talented young driver from Georgia. He's hooked on with a full-time ride and helped re-energize that whole race team. That team had a top 10 finish here a year ago. Trouble, Trevor Bain's around. Big crash for Bain, past winner of the 500. And with 17 to go, we're under caution for the fifth time. What a bad break for the Wood Brothers. Running 16th. Right up in the thick of things here late in the going. Tough break. Wind and net's coming down, so that's a good sign. Here's the previous lap, Daryl. Now watch Trevor Bain right in the middle of your picture and see if there is some contact here. This is the lap before the crash. Hurt Bush right in front of him. Oh yeah, the 11. The 11 got into the left front to left front fender and, and and here's what ends up happening one lap later. Let's see if we can see anything happen to that left front tire. No, the car just gets loose. Car does a little wiggle right there. It gets loose. He tries to catch it and he can't do it. It turns and goes right into the outside wall. Darrell, he was on the inside of Kurt Busch in that 41 car, and we've seen it so many times. It's almost like that was just pulling Trevor Bain's car around. It, it does. He, we, we saw he must be a little bit loose, and then he got on the, uh, somebody got on his right rear quarter panel right here, the 41 car, and it just it just pulls the car around. 51, see, Justin Allgaier, the rookie, a little luckier see this that time. Little he wobble, by. See that little bobble he had before yep. he spun the thing? It just sucked him around. Let's ride with Ricky Stenhouse. This ought to be exciting. Yeah, he's right here alongside of Trevor. And there you see the 21, it just starts to get loose. He tries to catch it, he almost had it. And whoa, right across the back of the 17 car. The Wood Brothers have sponsorship for 12 races this year. They'd love to run the full season. Should other sponsorship materialize, but wearing a uniform reminiscent of the 1950s, driving for one of NASCAR's oldest and most storied teams, five times winner, winners of the 500. Glenn Wood, Leonard Wood, both NASCAR Hall of Famers and their family race team. Steve? Well, Mike, just listening to Steve Letarte and Dale Earnhardt Jr., as soon as that caution flew, Steve Letarte told Dale Jr., save all the fuel you can. We're good to lap 200, but after that, it's gonna be close. And you know what? You know what I like about this, Mike? Gamble. You got to take risks. I heard Jeff, Jeff Gordon said, "You got to take risks to win this race." Well, they're taking a risk right now. You can see right there the RPM. It was at zero, up to 3,300. Now it's shut back off again. Kurt Busch, Ryan Newman, and others go the other way. They stop for fuel to top off the tank for this final run to the checkered flag. 15 laps to go under caution at Daytona. We'll take you side by side and then we'll go to the finish. Finishing up the fifth caution flag of the race. Leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, 
Alongside lights out on the safety car, we're going green this time. Kevin Harvick in third. Reed Sorensen, Brad Keselowski, they are the front five. The weather that has been advancing on Daytona Beach that caused a six hour rain delay earlier as it comes across the narrowest part of the Florida Peninsula. Seems to have stalled just a little bit. We've got 14 laps to go. We got this thing. That yellow ring is 20 miles out from Daytona Beach. So we're coming green with Earnhardt trying to win it for the second time. Jimmy Johnson back to back. Kevin Harvick to repeat. And how about that 36? Reed Sorensen for Tommy Baldwin Racing with crew chief Todd Parrott, a two-time Daytona 500 champion himself. They took gas only a while back for track position. Look where he is. I, uh, Todd Parrott, and, and, and Larry knows this. He's a, he's a great, great, great crew chief. Had some problems at the end of last year, got them all sort, sorted out. What a run. 13 laps to go, green flag. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. brings him through the restart zone, past the start finish line, and he drops down in front of teammate Jimmy Johnson. They timed that out beautifully. Uh, Jr. needed to get down in front of Jimmy Johnson in a 48. He did. Those guys are going to be hard to handle here at the end of this race. Right now, the inside line is moving. Greg Bifflin, that 16, is trying to get to the rear bump of Reed Sorensen in that 36. Sorensen could draft in the front with anybody, but at the front of that line, he might be holding Greg Biffle back. Yeah, and, and he has to be real, real careful because Greg Biffle won't be very patient with Reed Sorensen. Greg Biffle will say, this guy's holding me up. You need to get out of my way. So Reed needs to be on his, he needs to be on his toes. Trevor Bain checks and released at the Enfield Care Center. He is okay. After bringing out that caution with a crash, the fifth one of the night, Jeff Gordon up the outside with Denny Hamlin. This could get interesting as Kevin Harvick comes up to cover the spot. Yeah, both the Joe Gibbs drivers of Denny Hamlin, the 11, Matt Kenseth in the 20, jumped up there, but then Jeff Gordon in the 24 goes back to the bottom line. Man, they are tight off a of turn two over there. Boy, not much room at all. Woo! Hang on, fellas. The last nine Daytona 500s that went the distance, eight times we had a caution in the last 10 laps. But Larry, look, look at, the, I know I've said this already, but look, look who's at the front now. We've had different guys lead this race, run up front all night long. But when it comes down to showtime, when it comes down to who's gonna get the big trophy, the Harley trophy, who, who's always gonna be in the front? 11 laps to go. Let's go back for our five hour energy, big move of the race, this restart where Dale Earnhardt Jr. times it to get out just ahead of Jimmy Johnson, enough to slide down in front of his teammate and try to hold everybody off. That's your five-hour energy, big move. Well, one of the things I don't like, and they've been getting away with it, fine, that's all good, but I don't know how much longer it can last, are some of these quick moves. Double moves cause double trouble. And swinging down in front of somebody and swinging back to the outside, they're gonna have to watch that as it gets closer to the end here. Krista, how about that second place car? Went oh, Jimmy Johnson. Kurt Busch goes for a spin off turn number four, slides toward the inside. We're staying green as the starter flashes open hands. Ten laps to go to the field as they head off to turn number one. Bush is in the grass, sliding around to pit road. Wheels are on the pavement. Maybe he can get it out of harm's way. Field out of turn two. I don't know the 41. Yeah, he got her. He's got it fired up. He's backing up. He's in the pit lane, so he's definitely going to get going. Jeff Gordon down to the bottom in the 24, and now it is three Hendrick Chevys. One, two, three on the inside. Kurt Busch got away. We stay green. Nine laps to go. There comes Kevin Harvick in that four car, though. Jimmy Johnson jumped up in front of him in that 48. The strongest cars we've seen down here all at the front right now. The 11s there, Hamlin, the four of Harvick. We've seen uh, Jeff Dale Jr. of the, the strongest cars that have been here all week are at the front of the field right now. Is that one of those guys going to win this race? And the best drivers, Darrell. The four drivers in the front have a combined seven Daytona 500 wins between them. These are the guys that know how to win the Daytona 500. The guys you see at the front right now. Jeff Gordon has, what, three wins down here. Jimmy Johnson, Je Jeff Gordon got two wins, sorry. Jimmy Johnson got two. I mean, these guys are good. 
Hill Jr.'s got one. Eight laps to go. Harvick knows the way to victory lane. And trying to get there, Brad Keselowski, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Reed Sorensen still there with Matt Kenseth and Carl Edwards in the top ten. Yeah, Reed didn't get a great restart. He kind of fell back through the field there. But, man, that old 36 car, it comes up through the middle pretty good. Look at Brad Keselowski in that two car just pushing Jeff Gordon in that 24. And still in that lead pack, we talked to him at the top of the day, talked about him, Terry Labonte in his 32nd and final Daytona 500. He's still within 1.2 seconds of the lead. Hey, it's your last race. Make it a good one, buddy. Texas Terry. Jeff Gordon jumps to the outside in the 24 car, trying to take his second spot away from Keselowski. Seven laps to go, looking back from Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Brad Keselowski, one, two. Boy, you make the wrong move. Jeff Gordon made somewhat of a bad move there, and it's gonna cost him. And I keep seeing Kyle Busch in that 18 car talking about drivers that want to win the Daytona 500. It wasn't that many laps ago. He was a lap down. Here he is fighting in the top five. Man, look at those cars move around. We're running over 200 miles an hour, and these guys are using every bit of the skill they have. They're trying to, oh, oh got another the, car Up goes around. Ryan Newman, Justin Allgaier, Brian Scott, Terry Labonte. Dang, gone. Cole went right at the back of the field. Unless they can get this cleaned up in a hurry, this is not going to be good for those drivers up front that are very marginal on fuel. Parker Kligerman involved as well. Both the Swan Racing cars torn up in this one. Well, they did that earlier in the week, and they were just lucky to piece everything together to make this Daytona 500. And now they've got a couple of more torn up cars. What a bad bunch of luck for them. Sixth caution flag with six laps to go. And Terry Labonte's dreams of winning the Daytona 500. It, it's no coincidence. To it's no coincidence, Mike and Larry, that you get down to the end of the race, we have these kind of things happen. It, I mean, you, like I said, you just can't give anymore. Whoa, it looks like the three car of Austin Dillon got into the back of the 31, gave him a shove, and it got him loose. And I think Ryan Newman in the 31, Darrell, was checking up for something in front of him. Plus, it just as he was about to turn off in the corner as well. He got a little bump. Here's another look. Watch the cat Chevy of Newman, 31. Man, it just, that little bump, and it just, it turned him. It's just in that vulnerable spot going into that corner. The car's a little free right there. Casey Mears in that 13 somehow got through there. I think he's done that all night. <laughs> he has. This happened back about 14th place. Man, they are grinding. I mean, that's just grinding it down right there. Brandon Davis, owner of Swan Racing. Uh, 50 cents, one of their sponsors. They were going to have two cars finish in the top 20 of the Daytona 500. There they are, the 30 and the 26. They're going to finish on the rollback. Frankie Stoddard's car for Terry Labonte, who said after he qualified Thursday in the, in the dual race, this would be his 32nd and last Daytona 500. Mike, this, this is at the end of the day when you've been here. You've been out here since 1 o'clock. We started the race today at 1 o'clock. You've been out here all day and most of the night. Your energy level is low. You're tired. Your focus is a little bit off. And, man, it doesn't take but just a little bit to make a mistake at these speeds. Now, Larry, of the top 15, there are only a couple of cars that we're pretty confident could go through one, two, or three overtime runs. Yeah, what may be saving them, now we do know that Kevin Harvick was one of the drivers that came back to pit road at lap 152 and topped off just like Jeff Gore, but the saving grace up into this caution right here, we had run 14 caution laps since they were on pit road. That definitely buys them, especially cutting it off like that. That's gonna buy them a number of laps. Well, on the well, highways, they call this hypermiling, coasting, shutting off the engine to save fuels. In fact, some modern automobiles will do it for you, but they, not to win the Daytona 500. Probably not. Well, yeah, don't forget, Jimmy Johnson ran out of fuel here the other night on the last lap in the fourth turn. So if that should happen, we know uh, it creates quite a mess. Parker Kligerman, 
His dreams of the 500 are over. He's out of the car. Pretty wrecked up. Michael Waltrip, it has been, uh, boy, a night of calamity. Sorry you were involved in it, but gosh, six caution flags and several multi-car pileups. But I tell you, Mike, wrecks are going to happen when you got cars bunched up this tight, but the driving that I'm seeing at the front of the pack is the most amazing display of talent and timing and taking chances, just showing the passion, the desire, how much winning the Daytona 500 would mean. Dale Jr., Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, now Brad Kay coming up in the middle of this. I've never seen guys race harder than I saw the last 10 or 15 laps. And this finish, it's going to be something else. And uh, I just, I, I hope they make it because it'll be the best two laps ever in the Daytona 500. Your, your former teammate and wingman, Dale Earnhardt Jr., is the leader. But all week, Michael, you've been very high on Brad Keselowski's chances. He's the second place car. Remind us why. I just like that car that he's driving. He just seems to be able to do things that I didn't see many other people do on the track. I ran around him. He was able to side draft and really shoot ahead of other cars. And now he finds himself right in the front with a chance to win this thing. When you're out on the track, it's important to understand the moves that you're going to have to make to win the race. A lot of these guys didn't make any of those moves or many of those moves until the last 10 laps. It's all on the line now. And uh, being a guy that's been out there knows what it's like. I can't believe the way these guys are driving. They're cutting each other off, they're, but they're, they're not wrecking so far, the front guys at least. Whoa, Whoa. Joe Jr. just picked up a big piece of trash on his grill. Uh, looks, looks like, like a, a trash bag looks or like something. Looks like a trash bag. Or a, perhaps a piece of Bear Bond, oh, it's bear bond. that came off Ryan Newman's car. My gosh, if it's now, Bear Bond, it'll stick there and you can't get it that's off. That's right. That stuff is so sticky, hopefully. Hey, you it, need to get right up behind the pace car. Something come up on our grill. It, hopefully it does not. Make sure you have the electric paint off and get right behind the pace car. That's Steve Latart. See, that's, that's adhesive, tape. so that's... hopefully it doesn't block the grill opening. It's not just going to blow away. That's not a trash bag. No, if anything, it's going to get tighter. Yeah, that's that's not going to come off getting up there against the pace car. I, I don't think so, Larry. Maybe Buster could reach out and pull it off. Buster Otten, the uh, passenger, I'm reminded in the pace of so car. many things. His dad hitting oh, a seagull gosh. on the back straightaway, damaging his car, and yeah. Dale Earnhardt still on there to get hot. A mile from victory in a Daytona 500. Tries to break the draft, cuts down a tire in turn three of the final there, lap. There's probably what he's going to run over and pick up right yeah, there. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't see that. I'm surprised well, that the spotter or him or somebody didn't tell him about it. But, Larry, is that blocking the opening to the grill, do you oh, think? Oh, that thing is huge. It, it, it's definitely over part of the opening. But make it. Here's what I would say. It's two to go, <laughs> yeah, right. but get that piece of trash <laughs> on the grill. It, it might help him, you know, if it doesn't know, hey, get guys, over Hey, guys, this could be an advantage. He's only got to run three laps. That's going to make his car more slippery aerodynamically. Um, he's in the front. This could help him a little bit. It's, yeah, it's uh, not point. going to overheat in three laps, I don't believe. No, nah, I don't either. And I, I tell you, I think you're right, Mike. I think it'll help him. Well, especially with him being out front and getting some air into that grill. But, yeah, the more you can block that up, the faster it's going to run down the straightaway. So I, I wouldn't even worry about that. I don't even know if I'd even told him about it. Well, you know what? What are you going to do about it? You can't pit. Now, most of what you see in black on the front of that car is not grill opening. The grill opening is a narrow slit within the grill area, and it has hardware cloth or mesh uh, right in it. So pretty narrow is the amount of actual opening to the radiator there. And from what I can see, that bear bond is not covering it very much. So let's set the field for you as they come around to two laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr trying to win the Daytona 500 yet again. Brad Keselowski for Roger Penske, trying to give the captain his second victory. And remember, it was Dale Jr. who gave Keselowski his big break to drive Jr.'s car in the Nationwide Series. Now, right behind them, Jeff Gordon, the 24, Kyle Busch in the 18, coming from one lap down, Carl Edwards and Denny Hamlin, Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Stenhouse, Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick are the top 10. And the wins this year count more than ever. You win it, you might be in the chase. It might be the win you need, and it's a chance to get one right here. Kelly Earnhardt Miller, Dale Jr. sister looking on, and here we go. Green flag, two laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets to that restart box, and he is gone. Yeah, that car is, I mean, it takes off. 
Now, he definitely doesn't want to get too far out. We know that's not good. And he is making a pretty good gap here. Here, here comes watch. the two. Brad Keselowski on the outside. Got a little bit of help from behind. Gaining on the leader. Junior comes up to cover. Jeff Gordon now leading the inside row. Unless Keselowski or Bush or Denny Hamlin in the 11 drops down, it's Hamlin. What a move by Hamlin. Woohoo! Now, if we get back to the white flag, we have a race. Look at Stenhouse in that 17 in the middle, back and forth. And Boy, back he and just forth. shoved Kyle Bush right out of the way. Ricky Stenhouse in the 17 to third place. White flag with Stenhouse up in position to challenge in that blue four. You know what, Larry? I believe that tape's going to stay on there, and that baby's going to come home a winner. Denny Hamlin has not lost a race this week. He's number 11. Keslowski, the 2012 champ, battling back to the top. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Pied Piper of Daytona, trying to hold them all at bay. And Kyle Busch was trying to make a third line at the top of the racetrack. Boy, here they come. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We've seen a lot of passes off turn four than the start-finish line, but that 88 is pulling away. Less than a mile to go. Oh, we got a wreck. Third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brings him to the flag. Checkered flag waving. It's over. It's Earnhardt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job, June Bug. Woo. Reed Sorensen's race ends up in a crash. Harvick into the wall past the end of pit road. And Carl Edwards, 99, all torn up. Here comes Kyle Busch backwards across the start-finish line. Factor across. Now, the caution flag waved before Earnhardt took the checkered flag. Officially, the race ends under yellow. NASCAR will review all... I cannot all... believe it. <laughs> Unbelievable. They'll review all photographic and video evidence. It'll be a while before we have an order of finish. Reed Sorensen is okay. Carl Edwards moving around in his car. The Pied Piper leads them around for the final lap. And, and, and how can you take some bad luck? Get something on your grill with three laps to go, a piece of tape. You couldn't come down pit road and put a piece of tape on there and do any better. The black number three returned to Daytona this week. Where'd that big piece of black tape come from? <laughs> Remember, in the offseason, his crew chief, Steve Latart, said to Dale Jr., this is our final season together. Let's make it memorable. They already have. It's yes, awesome, sir. dude. I can't quit watching you right now. Steve Latart, his crew chief. A champion of the Daytona 500. I've said it, and I've said it, I've said it. Those two guys are going to do a lot of good things this year together because they, they, they know what it means. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. has gone winless in four of the last five years. And won't be able to say that about 2014. Or keep counting his runner-up finishes in the 500 yeah, because that, that 88 back car, victory though, lane. That thing could get out front, and he could just go from one side to the other. I mean, he, he was just had a fast car at the end of the day. I believe Dale Earnhardt Jr. has got a little celebration planned here. See what he's going to do. He's not a whole lot he can do right now. The whole front straightaway is full of wrecked cars. He is saluting the fans and coming all the way down the front stretch, reminiscent of when Alan Kowicki won his first cup race and did a self-styled, as Kowicki called it, Polish victory lap. It's the wrong way around, but it puts your face right in front of the fans where he can look him in the eye and hear them cheer. You know what I love? I mean, to see Dale Jr. that excited, to see him just pumped, man, about winning that race, and he should be, but look at him. He's like a little kid in there. Yeah, I don't He's know if I've ever seen of him that pumped up. No, I haven't either, Larry. It's just so good. Look at him. He's going to jump out of that thing. He's going to be up on the side of the door there in a minute like his dad used to do. And he's about to be a 40-year-old little kid, but I guess there's a little kid in all of us, Darrell, yeah. especially when you win the 500. I never think about him being old. I still think about him being Junebug. 
11 time NASCAR's most popular driver, and that is voted by the fans. <laughs> and Dale Jr. captures the flag at the start finish line and begins oh, to head oh, toward oh. victory lane. They are going to have some kind of celebration back at the old Hendrick Motorsports shop, probably over at Whiskey River, have a little uh, special night or something. This could be big. And Phoenix better put more grandstands. Yeehaw! Car owner Rick Hendrick headed for victory lane yet again. He won last year with Jimmy Johnson. He wins this year with Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> On the way to the finish, we knew it would be a wild one. And here it is. Harvick up into Kyle Busch and Jamie McMurray and Reed Sorensen. Busch around, makes further contact. Cars pile up and more are on the way. That's why the caution waves with the checker. And it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. capturing the Daytona 500. Uh, There's his sister, brother-in-law, L.W. Miller, and crew chief Steve Letarte uh -huh. with the biggest fist pump of all, aside from this one. They won yesterday, they won today. Chris Myers back with you, the Daytona 500 post-race show presented by Sprints. And a landmark moment for Dale Earnhardt Jr., his second Daytona 500 victory. There's owner Rick Hendrick celebrating, pitching a ride with the 88 car. There's Chad Kanaus congratulating Jr. his first win in his last 56 races. The return of the three car that his father made so famous, Dale Earnhardt Jr., with a victory at the Daytona 500. Matt Yoakum is there for the celebration. And the biggest hug to Steve Byrne, the gentleman at Hendrick Motorsports that works entirely on the restrictor plate super speedway program. Dale Jr., 10 years ago, celebrated out in the grass here at the Daytona International Speedway, his first 500 win. And a hug with the big man himself, owner Rick Hendrick. Dale, does your second Daytona 500 win take on even greater significance considering the, the journey you've traveled over the past six years? Yeah, I think so. Man, this, uh, winning this race uh, is the greatest feeling that you can feel in this sport. And uh, aside from obviously accepting the trophy for the championship, I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to feel that again. And it feels just as good, if not better than the first because of how hard we tried year after year after year, running second all them years, wondering why and, and what we needed to do. And I got to get my head together. I got to thank National Guard, uh, that Mountain Dew, all our sponsors, uh, Kelly Blue Book, Chevy and Sprint, uh, and, and my team. This race car was awesome. We showed them there all night long how good a car we had. And it's because these guys are right here putting it together in the shop, man. That thing would do anything, nobody. We could fight off battles after battles. And uh, we got a little help at the end from Jeff to get away on that restart and just sort of try to take care of it from there. It was, uh, this is amazing. I can't believe this is happening. I'll never take this for granted, man, because uh, this just doesn't happen uh, twice, let alone once. So just real thankful. Thanks to all my fans out there for supporting us. We pretty much uh, might be in the chase. Ain't going to worry about that. Get that off our chest. And we're two times Jay Total 500 champion. You've told me several times you cannot put into words and measure what Steve Letarte has meant to you and your career. Did he resurrect it? Surely. Um, him and all these guys, you know, you got to give. He builds a great crew. These guys are so talented. So, uh, obviously, Steve knows what he's doing. Put a lot of good people around us to make us make a successful. 
Uh, they, yeah, they put a lot into this car, you know, all winter long. This thing's got 11 coats of clear coat on it. On top of the decal, they clear coat it, then decal it, and then clear coat it. Sand it, and clear coat it, sand it, and clear coat it. I mean, that's just part of the effort that goes into this car to make it what it is. And, uh, I mean, the whole series is, is that dedicated and devoted, but the, the man hours and the, and the time and, and sweat and blood these guys put into these things, man, it's so rewarding to be able to take it to Victor Lane for them. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Chris? Well, up to this point, it had been Denny Hamlin's Speed Weeks. You come away second in the Daytona 500. A lot of people would say, hey, I'll take it. But after the week you've had, do you leave here disappointed? Well, there's a lot uh, to be disappointed about, but there's a lot to be happy about. Um, you know, after we came back from the rain, uh, my radios weren't working, so I had to wing it uh, those last uh, 150 laps uh, on my own. And with that, with not having a spotter there on that last green white checkered, I had I didn't know whether to back up more. You know, he gives vital information for you to get runs. And so that's why we kind of lo lost our luster uh, after we came back after the rain. But it was just me trying not to wreck anyone, trying not to get in any trouble, trying to trying to spot all six corners uh, by myself. But um, it's still a great run, but I am a little disappointed. Wow, flying blind at Daytona. Now that's an achievement. Brad Keselowski, you had a great race car. Tell us about the battle at the very end of this Daytona 500. It was good. It was real good. Just uh, came up a bit short with the Miller Light Ford. Uh, really, really fast car, like you said, and it was uh, a lot of fun to race. But uh, got to lead, led some laps, did everything I could to, to stay up there. And, uh, you know, the last restart was just crazy. And I had the 18-11 behind me there. Give me a good job pushing into three. And I honestly thought we were going to win uh, right then, going into three with the, the run we had with the 18-11 got separated. And, uh, that just stalled my run, and I couldn't get any help from behind for the next lap and a half, so that was all she wrote. So, so in other words, it sounds like there wasn't much else you could have done. Uh, you know, there's always something more you can do. You just got to try and figure it out, but uh, I didn't see it, that's for sure. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. And when you look at Steve Latart's racing resume, you'll see that he spent a lot of time here in Daytona Victory Lane with Jeff Gordon as a crew member. And Stevie, <laughs> your first 500 win as a crew chief. Can you even put into words what this means for you and your family? No, no, this is the one... Um, you know, it's really everybody at the shop. You, you work all winter long to come down here with your best equipment, and they built a great race car, and uh, everybody worked real hard. Dale drove a great race, but if you're going to win one, this is the one you want to win. I'm glad uh, he knew I really ready to win this one, and Dale drove a great race. I'm, nothing better I can think of in the world than give Mr. Hendrick another 500 win in the last year. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Chris? A 10-hour day for drivers and yeah. worth the wait for Dale Earnhardt Jr. His crew chief is Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief with Steve Letzard. Junior Nation loyally supporting their driver who's in victory lane in the 56th running of the Great American Race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. enjoying the Daytona 500 post-race show presented by Sprint, and there is the trophy. And Jr. said the last week with the trajectory that our team has had, we are peaking at the right time. And Jimmy Johnson, two-time Daytona 500 winner now, joining his Hendrick teammate, also a two-time Daytona 500 champion is Dale Earnhardt Jr., who led the most laps and led for the first time in this race with 69 laps to go. Let's check in with Steve Burns. Well, Jeff Gordon, three Hendrick Motorsports cars in the top five. Obviously, you wanted to win the Daytona 500, but tell us about how the final laps unfolded. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm, I'm so excited for Hendrick Motorsports right now. Congratulations to uh, Dale. That's so cool. I know how excited his fans are. And Rick Hendrick, uh, another Daytona 500 victory. And, I mean, three uh, Hendrick cars in the top five was spectacular. Um, you know, I don't know what happened when the rain went away and the track dried. Everybody's brains just flipped over to this is a shootout. Uh, it was unbelievable the kind of race two, three wide bump drafting just craziness and uh i mean i was for a while you know we we didn't have great track position i was just hanging on trying not to wreck and seeing other guys do the same thing and we we you know got through some wrecks and then we really started having things go our way with some good pushes picking the good good lines my spotter eddie did a great job and alan and his team they, they just did an amazing job giving me a great car and at the end we were able to show it jeff in retrospect was there anything anything different you could have done on that last lap 
Well, no, I don't think so. I gave I gave Junior a great push uh, when we took the green. Uh, so we got a good start. The 99 got to my bumper and we started going, but then he got uh, kind of sucked off of me or, you know, whatever happened. And so I was just a sitting duck along for the ride at that point. And I saw Jimmy Johnson go three wide behind me. And my lane started going backwards. But then when he got to me, he gave me a huge shove. The 11 pulled down in front of me and our lane just went. And so at that point, you're like, OK, maybe we can get to junior. But at the same time, once I got to three and four, I thought, you know, anything the top three without a wrecked car would be a, would be a great finish. And, and uh, we wanted to win bad. And we had a car that could. But uh, we were also excited to see junior win it. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you. Four wrecks involving multi-cars, 42 lead changes with Michael Waltrip, Jeff Hammond, the final and official finishing order behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. Austin Dillon had an eventful evening, didn't he? Got spun out, spun out a couple guys and still got a top 10. Never stopped digging right there, but how about Denny Hamlin? He almost made history right there finishing second because he won the unlimited and a duel. Kyle Busch, who led early, remember he was the leader when we had that six hour and 22 minute rain delay red flag. I uh, was hoping for a better finish as brother Kurt Busch winding up 21st. Now Kurt Busch spun and we saw him stuck on pit road late. Ryan Newman involved in an accident when he got hit by his teammate um, Austin Dillon. These guys, uh, Casey Kane spun out leading the pits and then got in a wreck late. All these guys had problems. Tony Stewart an engine it looked like. Yeah, no Trevor, no Tony Stewart had a fuel pro pickup problem which put him out of the uh, race after coming back from six months being out of a car. A tough wreck for Michael Waltrip, but Clint Boyer out early as Dale Earnhardt Jr. survives a long day. His sister Kelly, one win in the last of five years previously for Dale Earnhardt Jr. His fans loyal, patient, still an ever popular driver, but coming up big on a lengthy Daytona 500. Well, when I sat down with him the other day, he said that he could not put into words what it meant winning that Daytona 500 in 2004. He said he didn't have any idea he's going to win it. It just came out of nowhere to get the victory. And he talked so confidently when we were uh, preparing for the race this weekend, he felt like he had a real shot at winning it. But you know, Chris, he said something that is going to be really important. He's on Twitter now. He said, if I win the 500, I'm on Twitter. So. <laughs> you can hold him to that, right? Yeah, I'm going to make sure it gets on there. Three second place finishes out of the last four races here at Daytona. This shows how good he is at this racetrack. And today, it seemed like you could not deny him because he was running on the race of his life. His father, Dale Earnhardt, won just one Daytona 500. A bit of irony with the three-car Austin Dillon, Richard Childress racing on the pole today. Much made of that. But number 88 and the National Guard Chevrolet of Rick Hendrick. Driven by that man, Dale Earnhardt Jr. All smiles with the victory and a running the perfect race. Post-race coverage will be continuing over on Fox Sports Live. Next on Fox, late local news except on the West Coast. Next Sunday, NASCAR on Fox comes to you from Phoenix. Look at the special start time there, 2.30 Eastern. And remember to go over to Fox Sports Live for continuing coverage with more analysis and reaction from the Daytona 500. At the end of the day and a long day, into the night, the 56th running of the Daytona 500 belongs to an Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Not Chris Myers. Thanks for hanging with us and being a part of NASCAR on Fox. Come on up the horizon.